Greetings, everybody. Hello and welcome. This is the War Divisions Final Fantasy Brave XPS Championship 2023, the Wazette Cup. My name is Justin. I'm for the title. And of course, we have the always lovely Aron J with us to do his legendary shoutcast. Hello, I'd like to point out that my tie today is the same color as Justin's hoodie. So we have coordinated our outfits today perfectly. <laughs> Indeed, it looks very nice. Um, that was not intentional for anybody wondering. But anyway. They didn't um, have to know that. We keep it okay. honest here. On Fair. Uh, anyway, so I apologize for the little bit of delay that we had. I had to get all the streams up and running. We're, we're trying to broadcast to multiple platforms. Trying to get it up. Anyway, so greetings to everybody out there that is watching. This is our second North American qualifier championship that we've had. This one is an auto battle. Still, Canada, Ecuador, Mexico, the US, North America, South America in general, and the rest of the world if you're in odd time for you. Anyway, we have a lot of great things to get through. Um, we've had some PvP action going on so far, so this stream is going to be starting from the quarter five. Uh, I think eight people. Yes, eight people. Yes, eight remaining. Yeah, eight remaining players, right. Uh, and yep. we'll be going through that all the way into the finals, and then we crown the grand champion here of the Wizette Cup. So let's get right into slides here so we can go over some information briefly. So first up here, I have the War Divisions Championship 2023. It is an official PvP championship. It's going to be held all year, including with the World Finals in December 2000. And the regional qualifiers that are coming up very soon alternate. Or the regional qualifiers are happening right now, alternating from auto and manual battle modes, and the time zones that are friendly throughout the world. So this does not mean that you can only register and sign in. All players that meet the requirements will be participate in all the qualifiers. And moving on here. All right, I am. I, if I'm a little bit quiet, I apologize. Um, try and turn myself. All right, hopefully that's a bit better. All right. Anyway, moving on here. Oh, my audio is cutting out. You want me to just take over for a minute, Justin? Take over. Yeah, if you could, just give me one second. I'll yeah, first. no problem. So what you guys see on the screen right now is the roadmap with the auto battles in red and the manual battles in blue. It is August 19th today. So that's the Wazette Cup. That's what you see on the screen. The first and second place winners of each auto battle and the first place winner only of each manual battle, I've messed that up in the past, will have a spot to play in the World Finals in December. This month, Auto Battle Wazette Cup is the second qualifier for North and South American time zones. Next month's manual battle, Ovis Cup, will be our second European time zone qualifier. So going back to Europe for another qualifier there. Here are the detailed dates, including the registration periods. As you can see, oh wait, I got ahead of this of the screens. So note that the uh, next week is the last one for Europe. And then here we go. Okay, here are the detailed dates, including the registration periods. As you can see, the registration for Ovis Cup has started today and the tournament will be held on September the 16th. Please note, all content is subject to change without notice. All right, next slide. See, if you guys have never run something like this before, usually Justin is talking and running the slides. So now we're gonna try and coordinate this. Here we go. Um, And for the prizes for the world finals, that's what you see on the screen here. Top three winners, trophy, in-game title, and Discord title. So everybody's getting that. Third place runner, 25,000 Vizior. Runner up will receive 50,000 Vizior. And the champion will receive 100,000 Vizior and a quest featuring the champion's party in game. So if you make it to the championship and you win with a team comp that is like Eileen, MR Mont, and um, Surges, well, then that's going to make it to the, that'll make it into the game. But I doubt that comp makes it in. For the latest information, don't forget to join the official PvP Discord server where you will be able to find in the link below. So yeah, join the official server, guys. It's a, it's a great place to hang out. If you ever play in these tournaments, that's where we run everything. 
Now, this is where Justin says, so what do you think, Orin J? And I talk about the championships in general. So here we go. I will say that today is going to be an auto tournament. <laughs> Um, hey, look, we're back. Today's gonna be an auto tournament. Those are definitely my comfort zone. But one thing I have um, gained a new appreciation for, and I mentioned this last live stream, manual battle in War of the Visions is really, really fun. I have gained a brand new appreciation for that. I've even tried it a few times recently myself. It's um, It takes a little bit more time. You have to be a little bit more engaged, but you become an instantly better player when you do that. And I even noticed I was playing through a Earth Selection Quest earlier today. And I noticed that the skills directly translate. Like, wait, how far away can I be to cast this spell while being out of aggro range of this mob? And those are the kind of things you think about in uh, manual play. Whereas in auto, you're like, all right, Bradley, go put haste on yourself, raise your CT and slap everybody to death three times. And that's uh, that's my preferred man way of playing. But, you know, it is what it is. Okay, Justin, is your audio good? Um, uh, Hopefully it is. Can you hear me? Do I sound okay? I hear you just fine. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting that you would hear me just fine, but the stream would not. Feel but we had the, there was a little hiccup beforehand. Maybe the, uh, you know, maybe California's internet is just. Who knows? You know, we're getting hit with a hurricane here. I don't know. Hurricane, yep. Anyway, so let me know in chat if it's better. Um, we got a lot to get through here, so we're just going to keep on a moving. So you hovered up through the Vizior. So next, we're going to jump right into the prizes and gifts here. So first up, uh, everybody, or the first place winner from the Wazette Cup is going to receive this amazing trophy here. This is, I think, maybe the fifth one that we have. It's hard to keep up with all of them. Sounds right. Um, but everybody's going to get an in-game title that participates today. We've had 32 people. So there's going to be the first place winner that gets Achiever of Glory. Second place winner that's going to get throw though <laughs> I almost combined two words there. Those who strive <laughs> for glory 2023. And then finally Throne Seeker 2023. Alright. Maybe it's the, a little bit better. It's hard to tell. But moving on here. So we wanted to cover the map a bit. So these are the match rules that we're going to be watching today during the tournament. We've got a single elimination tournament, and it's going to be auto only. And the speed is going to be 1.5 times, hardly for RNJ because the two times is hard to keep up with. Um, yes. Initial placement is going to be allowed. No changes to the formations or composition or everything after the players have loaded in. The referees are checking that. We've got a unit cost of 240, and the quarterfinals, semifinals are going to be best, uh, best of three. And the finals are going to be best of five. And this is going to be happening on the Snowy Mountains 2 map out there in Wazette Land. Very snowy, very hilly, so we're going to get some interesting matches here today. Uh, we do have a bit of a code of conduct here, so allow me to run through that just so you guys are familiar with it. So, to ensure fair and safe environment, we request that players respect the rules of the game and do not cheat or exploit any unintended advantages. All matches are being recorded and judged. If any instances of unfair play gameplay are discovered, one or more of the following penalty measures will be applied. There will be a warning, forfeiture of the prize title, disqualification from the tournament, and or suspension or ban from competitive play. And next up here, we've got a part two. So purposely attempting to crash the game after a match is strictly prohibited. If behavior from a player is identified, they will be considered disqualified. Player may also be barred from entering any future official tournaments if they have been determined to be acting in bad faith by the management staff. If there's any reason to suspect misconduct, the management staff may return to the log for review after the tournament. If misconduct by a player is identified, they will be penalized as stated in the rules. Right. And a couple more things here. So next up, um, I know we saw some discussion about this beforehand. Um, but we are going to be doing, yes, the most used units. This little campaign is going to be running during this broadcast. Um, so you're going to have to guess the units that will be used most during the Wazette Cup and receive in-game rewards for doing so. As you can see, if you guess the third most used unit, you're going to get 100 scrolls of vicissitude. And if you guess all five, you're going to get 300 scrolls of vicissitude. Um, so there is a form that you're going to be able to fill out. It's there in the YouTube chat for War the Visions. We're on two YouTubes today, <laughs> but it's there for War the Visions. You can find it in the description if you're on the Square Enix YouTube account. Um, I would probably hold off on putting your 
your um, predictions in until you've seen a, maybe a couple of the matches, but this is only going to be open for 30 minutes into the live stream. Maybe a little extra due to running late and some due to some issues. But anyway, so the third most used unit is Scroll of Vicissitude. And if you guess all five, like I mentioned, you're going to get 300 Scrolls of this. And they must be in the correct order as well. And only units that are being used during the live stream will be counted. So Ooh, take notes okay. while you can. Oh man, okay, good. Because I, I know there was a lot of Eileen play earlier in the day, and I did, you know, I, but I don't know that they made it to the live stream. So good. Was it? Good. Was there actually? Because I did not hear that. I have no idea. Probably not. That's oh, probably not true. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to dream. Yes. Um, but if you do guess correctly, you can. the rewards will be sent out on September 6th. So look forward to that. And we, RNJ and I, actually met our own predictions. Um, so let me take a look. I believe there's actually some information on the Discord. If you want to go check out the Discord, you can get some um, additional information and see, be able to make a more educated guess into what you think is going to happen since you're not going to be able to see the entire broadcast or the forum closes. Anyway, um, here is my prediction. I did not do this based on any science, um, and I did mine after RNJ's. I waited until RNJ did his predictions first, and then I did mine after. I'll show you his in a second. but. Based off previous tournaments and what's happening, I thought maybe Sephiroth, Little Leela, Lemire, Bartz, and Starlight Elena. There's definitely some overlap between ours. <laughs> definitely. Well, I, I figured Bartz might see some play because a lot of players consider him very strong. He was free. The first free 100 cost unit. I know some people might say, eh, actually. But it's true. Anyway, let's take a look at Ooh. RNJ's prediction. I mean, Thancred doesn't count. Okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So mine, I'm pretty sure I had lost to Alaya in Guild Wars earlier that day, so she became number five on my list. Like, I think when you asked me, she had just done me dirty, and so I just threw her on there. But the rest of them, I went with the 100 cost units. I think the, uh, I think a good formula for this kind of thing can be 200s and a 40 if you're going cost limit 240, so... I went with some popular 100 cost units right there for my Yes, but okay, I could see that. Yeah. You can't make a I, I you mean, can't make a team based off of your prediction. No. That's okay. <laughs> but but that's not the goal. The goal is guess the most used units. Yes. I think yeah, right. If I had to guess the most used team comp, well, then I'm I'm failing already. But yeah, you know, we'll see. We'll see. It'll be it'll be interesting for you. Um it's always these auto battle tournaments are usually about 2 months apart. So a lot, the game changes mm -hmm. pretty significantly. And then. All right. All right. So moving on here, we've got the viewer rewards. So these totals are going to be from August 19th, which is you know, actually the end of this until August 29th. So um, be sure to share the stream or the VOD to um, your friends, family members, everybody else will tally up the amount of views that we get across all channels. And if we hit 8, 10, and 13,000 views on them, you can see the rewards that we have up for grabs. Um, so these rewards are going to be sent out on September 15th. Cool. All right, I'm getting a note here. Oh, breaking news. Uh, I'm just going to scale back here real quick to this. So you need to guess the top five units um from one to five not five to one okay so that's that's the note that i'm getting here you need to guess the top five units one to five not five to one so be sure to check out the form and make sure that you're filling it out correctly hopefully that's clear all right perfect <laughs> So just be sure to read the uh, script or read the uh, the form there. So you're filling it out correctly because there's no do overs. All right. And next up here, we've already hit our milestones or two of the milestones here for our discord. Server. Yes. And the rewards have already been sent out for the first two milestones. So we've got our fifth milestone here, which I think we're getting kind of close to. So. Be sure to join the Discord if you have not joined the Discord. The official War Divisions PvP Championship Discord has all the information that you need to become a PvP Master, where all the coordination happens for the live stream tournaments, where you need to sign up in order to participate in one of the future tournaments. So if you're interested in that, you need to be on the Discord. 
also a lot of discussions and things going on there so be sure to check that out pull out your phone scan the qr code and jump on in hopefully we can hit 5,000 members very soon i know a lot of people are very 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 anxious for three visigenic antlers for you are all right and next up here um we've got a little something with r on j uh this was teased out a little bit i did some previous interviews with some past pvp participants um but we've got a i guess we've got uh auto battle pvp consultation coming up on august 26th at 6 p.m specific time on r on j's yep. youtube channel. next saturday yeah yes notice it's not manual pvp consultation because <laughs> i'm not trying to make people worse at the game it's auto pvp so i think i have a couple things to say it should be really fun um i'm really looking forward to doing it hanging out with some players getting some people on stream and you know playing around awesome yeah um you actually have a chance to sort of appear on the on his live stream you can be one of five people that are chosen to receive some personal and personal consultation consultation is the official word yes um but you can be in the discord as well or be in the live stream while the stream is going on you can ask questions and if rnj gets to him he gets to him but i'm sure he's gonna be busy trying to consult be a consultant yes official consultant <laughs> i will be watching the discord chat though we're gonna be running yes. all chat through discord that night just to um you know instead of having twitch discord youtube all that open we're gonna just run it all through the discord so if you want to get your thoughts heard jump into the discord and if you join the discord it'll help us get those visit genetic antlers as well so win 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 so the form, you should be able to grab the form. Um, I think, I believe it's in the description of the various uh, YouTubes and Twitch. So scroll down, click on that, and you can pull out the form. So thank you very much, Honor on Jay, for doing that. that sounds very oh, exciting. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's going right. to be great. So we're moving on in. We're closing on in on the um, tournament here. Um, but we have the bracket. We want to go over the bracket. So this was released on the Discord previously, so you could see who was participating. Some familiar faces, I'm sure, if you are part of the PvP scene, especially in North America. So let's take a look. This is the full bracket, and there's 32 people here. And 16 of them... Wait, hold on, that's not right. 24 of them have been <laughs> eliminated. <laughs> so we're looking at the top eight, and you may be asking, what does that look like? Well, it looks like this, so we're yep, going so to be... A lot, a lot of these names are familiar, like very familiar names. Yes, they are. Um, so we're going to be jumping into Jeff E and Rufio at the beginning. Um, I believe they're getting that ready, getting it set up. So we'll be jumping into that shortly. Yeah. Right. Do we have the, we have the usual like a uh, player slides coming up next? Yeah, we I always do. like breaking those down. Not yet. Not though. that I'm not oh, sure. Not yet, though. I'm ahead I, of the game. I don't game. think that. Yes, I don't think they've quite set up the room or anything. So I'm not, ah, I'm not okay. sure what this what step in the process there is. You know, we've got to verify that everybody is <laughs> using the right units. The I believe the map might have the cost restriction built in, but either way, the cost restriction has to be verified. No stats changing. That's sort of, RNJ has done this a trillion times. He knows how it goes. So yeah, with like with a 240 cost limit, basically what you're looking at is you can play any two UR units you want if you're playing an SR unit or um, cheaper as your third. Now, if you get that 240, you know, you could play 80s, a mix of 80 and 70 cost units. But if you're looking for those premium 100 cost units, you could run two of those and an SR unit at 40 cost or slime or, you know, um, Zazon, something like that if you really wanted to mix it up. That's definitely one of the reasons why, like if I was it's really trying to win those top five unit pick thing, that, that's tough, by the way. That's tough sledding, getting all five of them in a row. If I, I would have Leela on there. She is a great SR unit. I definitely think one of the top five units played will probably be an SR. We've seen a lot of Naya in the past. Now mm -hmm. in autoplay, she's trickier her ai is not as um let's say efficient as maybe somebody like little leela but don't forget too big man himself balo just had his quest his transcendence was really good 
He's got a cell phone now, and he's only one of only two player, two units in War of the Visions with a cell phone. So that's a thing. Uh, we could <laughs> see some Balo, King Bradley, Balo, something else, Queen Mashiri, Oberon, maybe double tank it with like a Dialdo, something like that. That could be really good. Looking at the rest of the SR units, Valade is very strong, really good buffing unit. You could see mm -hmm. some of that. Phoebe for like quicken, stuff like that. You know, Phoebe's got those time mage. And I, uh, okay, I'm having to brain, I'm blanking right now. The, the only rule is 240 cost limit, yeah, auto 1.5. So quicken is in. If you could set Phoebe up to, you know, hit some quickens on your Starlight Elena's, something like that. Okay, let's look at Jeff. <laughs> let's look at our guy Jeff here. Here we go. This is where I spend way too much time breaking down a picture. So Jeff is from the USA. Favorite character Jaden went with the picture Jaden and a very simple shout out just says, hey everyone. That's the kind of uh, that's the kind of message I can get behind. So Jeff, hi back to you. Good luck today. And favorite character Jaden, a good unit to maybe hit some quickens from a Phoebe. So maybe we see some light element teams with like a Phoebe, Jaden, Tank, Phoebe, Jaden, Starlight, Elena, something like that. Maybe we see a little bit of that action early on. Mm -hmm. All right, next All right. up we have Rufio. Rufio. Now, first of all, Rufio makes me think of a movie that I can't remember the name of the top, but it's like a Robin Williams movie from back in the day. Anyway, from the USA, favorite character is Sodaly, but uses the picture of Jiza. Now, Jiza, obviously famous for the bells. I doubt we see Jiza in the fights tonight, though. Sodaly definitely could be in the fights. Keep in mind, wind is an element that just got two massive transcendence buffs. Sodaly being one of those and Flagbear Glassy being the other. So wind is is very, very relevant right now and with how prevalent earth is you you could very well see some wind teams out here to try and catch a bradley off guard although i mean let's be real we've all seen bradley chop his way through some wind teams in the past so this will be your ultimate end there's your message shout out right there from rufio all right perfect um i've actually joined the room here so let's do it gonna be jumping in very soon very very Okay, before we see it, my prediction is light versus wind. We'll just we'll okay. just stick with the favorites. Light versus wind is my prediction here. Mm. If not, maybe light versus light. Light versus light. We'll just get a uh, ooh light for Jeff and Miranda, sweetheart Miranda. Okay, you love to see that. And then Rufio <laughs> with the Valade. So I did mention Valade earlier. Very good buffer good support unit for maybe like a mono ice team and everybody made fun of my alaya pick on my five units watch there be alaya straight out the gate and i'm like right away making good picks out there let's see nope it's gonna be a punching team with valet alaya and kareen versus a light team there's your barts though justin you nailed the barts barts uh valentine's day miranda and engelbert as a tank so full ur team versus a WR Valade team. Uh, the WR Valade team, I believe, is under the cost limit, too. So that's interesting. But still going with Valade, just feeling like four cost-limited options, that's the best you got. Now, one of the great quality of life features we've gotten lately has been the addition to C, area of effect resist, in, like, the formation screen. Note one thing about both Barks and Miranda. They both bring AoE resist buffs, to the group now Bart's is actually a four turn buff so i think it's a little bit superior to miranda's all those hers also gives her but okay well, wait a second hold on wait <laughs> harry just walked up to Bart's and punched him for like, like wait wait he just got punched by both ur units on uh on rufio's team and Bart's is just standing there like he's the main character in war of the visions like like he doesn't maybe he needs to remember he's not in his own game right now he is teeing off he did way more damage to those two than those two did to him now, here comes the Vitalizer buff, little uh, resistance buff right there, but not light resist. So the resistance buff, not gonna be as effective versus this light team. And then the heal for Miranda, gonna get Bart's, oh, wait, okay, wait a second. Puri decided she was sick of this nonsense and Puri just put Bart's down. What just happened? He went from being unkillable to being destroyed right there. So Bart's out and now Edward in, going for Miranda and Engelbart. He hits them both, debuffing them. Miranda, now that she's in range, will look to do damage instead of heal. Chunks both units out, but Perrine has that self-heal, so she will top back off. 
Blade's going to move in, look to do a little bit more supporting. Akira comes across, and this strike team, which was looking very down in the dumps early, has definitely acquired a lead on the back of Perrine's fist. Okay, Edward's up next. He's looking, he's got Engelbert in his fights, full metal fist, 4,700 damage. That's pretty good. Engelbert down to about 50%. Miranda's going to get another try. She's going to break out the limit break right here. Somebody gave this girl flowers for Valentine's Day and there was a sword inside. So that's not great for Ed. He's going to get some heart emojis and get cut in half. He goes down. Miranda, 25 AP left. That's something she's got to watch out for. Even though she is a magic scaling unit, she does not have that like mage level of starting AP. So she can run out. Blade moves up. We're going to get a Curata on Perrine. Definite star of this match so far is Perrine. Die 1,000 deaths. Oh my gosh. This move. She just hit Engelbert for 12,000 damage. Engelbert is very, very dead. Miranda, 25 AP left. Crescent Spirit Break, 68, 60. It's good damage. She's done enough damage to have killed Perrine multiple times. But Valade has been there. Valade is just keeping her in this match. Now he's, uh, no, he is in range. Curata coming through again. 5809 on the heel there. Miranda with only one AP left. Won't even get the attack off. She's preemptively counterattacked. Goes down. Jeff picks up the win in the first match. GG Jeff. And that Miranda was looking good. But the heels, she just, it, you love Perrine, yeah. yeah. You're a water guy too, Justin. <laughs> You're a water That's player. That's true. You know, oh, I, was, I was curious to see, I was thinking about um, Ferris recently, and yeah. she has a very interesting mechanic with her ability, so I was curious to see if we would see that in the tournament at all. With you the, know, I um, think Ferris is, uh, not not um, to uh, spoil anything, but um, I think Ferris is really waiting for Summer to really show up in a big way. Not that Summer, summer is not a fit. I don't yo, know what that means. I have no idea. Yeah, me that. neither. I don't know either. But, um, but Ferris water. is... Perrine is also water, yes. And <laughs> Ferris works really well with Perrine. That um, Ferris's ability to heal while also doing damage is very good. It's, it's, I, I think people, um, Ferris got a little bit of a bad rep when she came out. And I think that's completely unfair. She is somebody on my, uh, on my account that I built up quickly, threw a good trust stone set on her, and she has been uh, very strong. So, also yeah. got a lot of shards for her somehow. I don't know how, but. Yeah, yeah, it's magic. Um, <laughs> one thing I was gonna say, I was doing my class matches or class pick or quick, quick pick, pick, quick pick. Um, mm -hmm. and last time I did it, I only ran evade slime. I got a couple wins. Um, but this time, I got of my five matches today, I did get one win. I was running evade slime, and Aerith and Ayaka, and I ended up clutching a win. <laughs> I'm more confused than I ever. <laughs> Justin, you need to come to my PvP consultation. No. Trust me, it worked once. That's all I needed it. I, I was just yeah, happy you that know, I one won out of one. five ain't bad. Twenty percent. <laughs> if you're playing baseball, you like might get called from AAA. Nah, you mm. like yo know, maybe yo know, yeah. It's not even good in baseball, but okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, GG Jeff. All right, so I want to do a little. Uh, I want to do a little math right here. Okay. So we saw we saw Valaid. Valaid are you doing, is a are you doing well cost pick, limited pick math? math? Okay, never mind. So Valaid is a cost forty unit. Miranda is not one hundred cost. Miranda is old, is she a ninety or an eighty? Because Bart's is a hundred. We know that. Right. Miranda's so a seventy. Seventy plus so, seventy plus one hundred is two forty. So he was right at the. Yeah. No, because he's using Valade. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Miranda wait, was on the teams. other team. Oh, you're yeah. right. You're right. Engelbert. I'm, I'm, at, I'm making a whole new team that's only like cost 190 out of nothing right there. <laughs> so, yeah, I got confused. Okay, so the Valade team. That's the team that I thought was under the cost. So Valade was running with Perrine, who is a cost 100 unit, right? Warrior the Crystal unit, cost 100. Mm -hmm. And then she was running with Ed. Um... Edward. Gotta try and look him up right here. I believe he's 80? 90? Is he, is he 90? He's 90 cost. Mm, okay. So just 10 under the cost limit right there. Really not sacrificing too much. Yeah, you could go 100, 140, or you could go 190, 40 and still have a little wiggle room. I wouldn't be surprised to see some of those really strong MR50 costs today either. Okay, Jeff might be running it back. He brings out the Miranda again. 
And Rufio, 50, wait, no, Rufio has changed it up. That is 5,500 magic for Rufio. That is definitely a different team because Perrine and Ed are not rolling in with 3K magic on them. So I wonder what we'll get here. Maybe it's like a really spicy, like Medina. Um, Mediana. Mediana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you guys watching could have been here before we went live, Justin has been very helpful with my with my pronunciation of what things was it? today. Huh? Uh, it was, was a it? Japanese word that I was not saying <laughs> appropriately, I guess. You were doing fine. I was I was about one out of five. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. So we're going to get the run back here from Jeff. Swift and Fortified, the agility magic buff coming out there from Miranda. Boko's protection, that's that AOE resist buff with the physical shield for Bart. And then here we go, Addison Ray, Kafka coming out. Excellent. So we get to see the clown and Addison Ray early. Addison has shown up. It's not Kafka. It's Kafka. What? It's. <laughs> Don't even start me on this. The clown, I'm just calling him the Final Fantasy clown. He's here. He showed up. He's laughing at people. Kefka's here. All right, Kefka. We're going to get a little ice bra. Uh, there, okay, you know what? You watch you just take over. I'm just kidding. I'm going to take back over. I can't. There's no, the okay, don't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> There's the, no, that's what I was talking about last time right there, though. Um, one thing I will say about what Jeff did differently here is he got the AOE resist buff from Bartz onto Engelbert and then allowed Miranda to give herself her own buff and then Bartz one shot Addison Ray. One thing that the, Jeff's team kind of couldn't quite do last time was that one shot. Well, Bartz just put Addison down. So that's going to be really useful right there. Get her out of there. She's not giving everybody courage. She's not doing all that damage. That will help a lot. Now, Valade's going to step forward. He's going to go for the full life. Addison Ray back in the fight. And now everybody at 100% HP for a moment. Double arc slasher, though. That will take Addison Ray down again. And she's just getting picked on. That's her second time dying in this match. Bart's going to go Relentless Stance. That's the Courage with AP Restore online. Now here comes Kefka. He's going to look for some of those really annoying Kefka status effects. He's going to go Light of Judgment plus big damage debuff attached to that one. So no status effects, but a nice little bit of debuffing. Here's, oh, it's the Engelbert Limit Break. Circa 2001. People, oh man, you don't see that very often. He hits Filet pretty hard, but man, yeah, you just don't see that very much. I'm surprised. I usually think that's turned off. Raise this time. At, okay, wait, Addison, guys, come on. Filet, don't do her like this. She's died twice already. Filet, Courage Pop, he's still in there. He props his self heal. He's back to about full HP. Addison's going to get a turn, so she's going to get to do some damage. The Addison Ray comes out from Addison Ray, and Engelbert <laughs> gets down to about 30% HP. Then everybody's grouped up for Bartz, and that's a double kill addison has died three times in this match belade has died twice and now kefka is going to go light of judgment again big damage engelbert's hanging on by a courage barks is low enhancing blade comes out kefka goes down jeff almost hold on wait kefka with the turnaround right here the 1v3 I kind of doubt it. Like, Miranda's pretty far away and has a lot of AP left. He's just going to tap Engelbert in the back. At least get that one kill before he walks away. Now, if Bartz, for some reason, doesn't kill him right here, he does. Kefka goes down. Jeff picks up the win. We're going to game three in our first best of five today. GG. Yep. We're 1-1. One, one. Yep. I think at the end of the last one, you said Jeff won, but it was Ruth. Or any. Yeah, Rufio won the last one. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> I probably did misspeak. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're at 1-1. One, one. It's best of three, so the victor is going to be determined after the next round here. Oh yeah. Pretty interesting match. I love seeing Addison Ray. Oh, me too. That was nice. And she even used her move. She used the Addison Ray. <laughs> it's it's fun to shoutcast that. You know, anything that gives a little tongue-in-cheek to the shoutcasters, mm -hmm. anything that gives you a little more to talk about is wonderful. Um, Engelbert was an interesting pick, but again, Engelbert only costs 70, makes a lot of comps work with him. And Engelbert, man, you want to talk about a unit that has withstood the test of time. There have yeah. not been so, many better than him. Uh, they did very well. Obviously, they won here. Um, but they went full magic on that team. Engelbert is very susceptible to magic. So, yeah. He's like a, yeah, at but, a negative but, 30, I think, or something like that. 
Um, yeah, but notice he still didn't like he took enough hits. Yeah, he wasn't he out there well. doing Engelbert things, but he still was. It was enough. Yeah, Engelbert with his dream reincarnation and everything is still at minus thirty percent magic resist. It is not great. You can help it but, a lot these days, but back in the day, he was yeah. basically one tap by any match, <laughs> in right. my opinion. So that well, therefore like, I never leveled him. Oh really? Never. Never. Man, Engelbert was the tank, the meta tank for so long. Yeah. But you give him that, uh, I think what kept him alive is a lot of magic is AoE. In fact, mm -hmm. there's most magic. I don't know. I feel pretty safe saying most magic is AoE. And then Boku's Protection, which I believe is the name of Bart's AoE buff, is a four turn 20% AoE resist buff. So you mix in some vision cards, some gear, something like that onto an Engelbert. Doesn't matter. If he's uh, ma negative magic resist, if he's if he's negating 50% of the damage right off the top from the AOE resist, that is definitely a way to help keep him alive. Speaking of vision cards, uh, when I was setting okay. up my uh, 5D chess team earlier, I could mm. not find a single job card that I had that Aerith was on. None? She's on no cards? She's probably on a few of them, but I was trying to match... Well, Slime's on all of them. And yes. Aerith and Ayaka. Ayaka was on a few of them, but I could not find any overlap at all. So I just sort of went like, I don't think Aerith was on any of the ones. What job classification does Aerith fall under? <laughs> like, I don't I have will... every card. That's fair. But Wait, it was do, I mean, you don't just, but you're Justin. You don't just get everything for free? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> Although uh, I basically let's... got... Um, uh, Wrath for free. I got her with the free tickets. I don't think that's oh, ever happened nice. before. <laughs> you know, have you ever pulled a unit or vision card and then you get the free tickets later in the week and you get a gold book and you're like, no. Um, I usually have skip on for the tickets because there's like a 99.99% chance that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, all right. Okay. Then into match three here. All right, here we go. Oh, and it's, you know what? It's not it. a pure run back but rufio definitely going back this is probably the strike team right it's probably the perrine and it strike the first team here. time yeah. it did and jeff seems pretty committed to this miranda squad over here i i wonder and we know miranda is not jeff's favorite character because we just read his little profile card but uh you could switch up your movement again i thought jeff's team had much better movement in the second match than the first match so maybe mix that back in although you know what perrine a lot of single target attacks from Perrine. A lot of single target DPS in there. Those AOE resist buffs are not going to help you against her. Now, I did look it up, by the way, Justin. Um, and it's pretty obvious. Aerith's weapon group is staff, black mage, etc. <laughs> you know, so um, we probably should have known that. I do want to, in between matches here, we're going to do a little research, figure out what vision cards Justin doesn't have. Right now, we're mm. just waiting for Jeff and not Rufio to hit that start button. So I, I might be a little bit weirder than everybody else. I know a lot of people love okay. pulling units, but I think in the long term, vision cards I've always felt like have been more useful for me. So, and it's you know most of the time ten thousand Vizior to get a vision card that I'll right. probably use at some point in the future. Um, there's been a lot of units that I have basically pulled, leveled, used them a time or two, never really to think about them again. Maybe when they get their MA2, maybe you know, back in the air, maybe when they get 40, but vision cards I feel like have always been persistent, even with the job ones. But anyway, we're getting hot into yep. the action. And Ed's about to go down, I think. Bloodsword, yeah, Bloodsword. Ed gets popped. So initial placement <laughs> was a big deal this time because last match, if you remember uh, match one, when these two teams fought each other, Initial placement. Oh, that's really unlucky too. Valade's full life whips on Ed. That's going to put Perrine in a tough spot. Now, she basically killed this whole team by herself last time. So we'll see if she can do it this time with Valade backing her up. He does still have Rays in his pocket. 
So maybe it's one of those things where full life misses, but regular raise ends up landing. We'll have to see. Enhancing Blade's going to come out for Miranda. She's down to very low uh, AP now. Oh, man, that's that's not great for Blade. He's going to go down. Bart's with his second kill of the match. All of a sudden, it's Perrine versus three without a Valade to back her up. It's looking like Jeff probably has this in the bag. The preemptive counter, not quite enough to tank Eaglebert down. Retribution Drain hits her for all of her health. Vortex Kick is going to follow that up. It does take down Bart's, so she does have that going for her. Miranda's also out of AP, so she's just going to be channeling a spell. However, that spell is a heal for Engelbert. Engelbert will get lapped, but Perrine's out of AP, so 5,700 damage with just the auto attack. That's big, but just not quite big enough. Now, Engelbert's standing there. He's got his... Uh, He's got his ribbons flowing from his armor, big shield equipped, blood sword in his hand. There's only He's one thinking, unit, one thing to do. Come on. Yeah, like take him down, <laughs> Engelbert. Is he going to summon for it? He's going to go retribution drain, okay. 4702. Perrine goes down, Jeff wins, and Jeff will move on to the semifinals. GG, way to go, Jeff. Drop match one, get the reverse sweep. Yeah, that was awesome. Very well yep. done. Um, kind of sad that the Perrine team didn't work, but they were they were really out of the gate on that Ed. Yeah, Ed just got really uh, he got real aggressive right there, real <laughs> yeah. aggressive. I mean, definitely. Like, I think it's one thing to look on like a uh, like a team builder or something like that, or you're in your team builder and you're putting a team together, and you're like, man, this vision card works so good with these units, and everything seems great. But you really got to think about, like, how many turns do your units need before they fight? Some units need zero. Some units are just ready to rock. Some units want one. Some units want two. You probably aren't going to get three. But you, you want to think about that. It looks like Ed needed at least one. Ed needed at least one. And then, the, okay, and to be honest, too, Valade's full life missing. I don't know what the faith value was on that Ed. I'm guessing it was probably, probably around 50. 50. Yeah. yeah. Um so that's it's not a guaranteed thing at 50 faith that full life is going to land although you have a good chance of it landing so yep. yep unlucky so let's take a look at our next players which are well i think it's going to be let me see he's so he's so versus clouds okay so here. two names i definitely know he's so in cloud all right so now Hiso, I uh, had the pleasure of talking to Hiso at the Fan Fest. So looking forward to casting this match here from the USA. Favorite character, Stern Wing of Destiny. Shout out to Visipore community, family, and friends. Love you guys. So yeah, Visipore, very famous guild over here on the global version of the game. And Hiso, a, uh, yeah, a member of that community. And he's facing Cloud today. Stern Wing of Destiny, favorite character, and picture so there we go we got that synergy yeah, going on here yeah. yeah i like the city i like it when they do that i like the synergy oh so you may not have then, noticed that they did actually change <laughs> they did change the words did anyway so cloud comes in country from canada so we got a canadian player today favorite character cloud strife but pictured wing stern survival can be a matter of luck or skill and you can't rely on luck from cloud strife there we go. So we got an actual quote this time. Well, we had a quote. And, we had a quote on the last one. I think it was in the game, right? Uh, yes, it was. But this one is uh this one gives shout out to the um, author of the quote. Yeah, you know, this was. Oh, okay. okay, yeah, you, okay. yeah. So it's more like formally done, I guess. I don't right. know. It's easier for me to tell this one. The, the sources quote. are cited. Yes. Good. I will. I won't take points off. <laughs> okay. So while we're waiting, waiting for, for the this room number right now, yes. Yep. Okay, I looked it up, Justin. Here you go. Here's the list of vision cards that you must not have. Okay, a whole list. You couldn't right. Okay. Um, Abyssal Horde Greater Demon. Brand new one. Okay, I don't have Did that. I've been thinking about okay. it, but I don't have it. Okay. Uh, Minotaur. I knew you were going to say that one. I don't have that one either. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Whiskered Thunderfangs Master Coral. So new oh, coral, I not actually do MR1. have that one. I, I do have that one. I just don't have it leveled up. So I was only looking at my knight. Oh, okay, okay. So that one would have given you single target resist, magic resist, reaction block for your. Is group. Ayaka on that one? 
Um, is Ayaka <laughs> under the same? If she's no. on that, if she's on that card, then 100%. I'm gonna run it in. <laughs> in class match, <laughs> pick, pick tomorrow. So okay. Watch out. Let me tell you. <laughs> hold on. I I don't think she is, but I will look it up. So Ayaka's group is yes. Ayaka's on that. Ayaka's also staff black mage. Yeah. I think we so just Ayaka, found the dream team. You just found your card. Okay, there's more though. Meetings in the moonlight. That's the Dwayne um Leela the Bold card. Oh, I do have that one actually, but it's also only at 85. And it, by the way, it would make zero sense for your team. It's a it's a human killer physical card. What? So I mean I do have slime mostly magic. Well he Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it does give 20 AoE resist. So okay. you have the AoE single target resist combo there if you want to make physical damage slime or something um in order to change the world which is Hio's card hmm. also yeah i think i do i do have it because i did use it in the trials but also not okay um yuffie's card from ff7 yeah i actually have that one in the party i, I okay, was like well, so this is like the one. only one that sort of yeah. makes sense that, that <laughs> both of them are on so uh there's still more we're not done we got Beyond the Flames. It's the Frederica Engelbert card. Do you know what I'm talking about? The picture on the card mm. is Fred Engelbert. I think Urel's on there too. Somebody else is on there. I think it's Urel. That might have been um, one of those where I was like, I don't really have it. It's another human killer physical card, so it wouldn't mm. really make sense. And then Halloween Lucius card. Okay. Nightmare Before I've mentioned Halloween. this before on this live stream, but I... I really super, super, super regret not finishing that card when it was available. It is great. And I, we had, there was like, I was like, oh, maybe it'll come back sometime. Because we, we've we had like Halloween reruns in the middle of the year. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'll just wait for it then. And then it never came, it never came back. Ooh. Um, so every time we have like a limited guild battle and like the whole, the whole wall is Lucia's with that card. Yeah. You know? Yep, because that is, Halloween Lucia is a 120 cost unit and a 70 <laughs> cost price tag. Yeah. Um, yeah, that card is magic human killer, strike resist, single target resist. Like what a wow. Magic human killer. I did I did see a meteor in that. Mm hmm Ayaka will do that occasionally. She'll draw and you got the laser from Aerith. She can put out some damage. I've actually, right. like, I think when I tried to play Earth back in the day, I tried to play her with, as a DPS character. We in? All right. Okay, yes. Um, so let's jump on over here. Oh, oh, look. Cloud. <laughs> Thank you, Cloud. There's my Elia. Okay. There it is. Now, We were both right. Um, I want to say we were both right on this. That's true. You said Leela. You did. Yep. So we got the, this is the Justin versus Orin J matchup right here. Um, I wonder if Hiso is running mono dark like Sephiroth, Leela, something, or I would say if probably it's just... without a doubt. I know for certain his Sephiroth is Max reincarnate. Well, and I can't imagine that the Leela is not Max reincarnated well, right. and Dark Phoenix. That's probably three Max reincarnated Dark units right there. <laughs> now, here we go. This is an interesting little thing, though. This map is not very deep. Like, it's not very long across. So notice that Eliza immediately got out there and dropped damage on the group. And then Eliza's going to fall. Like, that's a dead Fina. They just blitzed Fina right there. And Curry, as one of those MR... Oh, wait. Okay. Doesn't matter how good you are, Curry. Reflex is part of the thing. Um, so... The tank, Leela the tank, being the slowest character in this game, was not given an opportunity to tank. She just had to stand there and watch almost her whole team die. In fact, it probably would have been her whole team die if Sephiroth wouldn't have reflexed. But because he did reflex, he turns around and one-shots the entire enemy team with Hell's Gate. Now, he dies to this nope. attack. No, he has courage. Okay, so it just gets popped. Aeolian Onslaught no, will get kill. One, he he didn't even, oh, he had 158. <laughs> you know, I was like, wait, where did he get courage? Anyway, so yeah. There we go. That was, that was, that was lightning fast. Now, <laughs> that was, that was, ab okay, here's the thing that just happened. Cloud had a better team. Cloud's team absolutely had better positioning, had better movement, dropped all the necessary damage to win that fight, and then Sephiroth was like, reflex, boom, doesn't matter, and then just walked out there and one-shot the whole enemy team. So, <laughs> that is one of the reasons 
why Sephiroth is so good. Because not only is his whole kit good, there's just a percent chance that he ignores damage, and that's what he did on the shot that probably kills him. And he lives, and he, like, I mean, that... I think Hell's Gate was the move he used, and it just literally opened that gate, and that whole team just fell into it. Except for, uh, you know, Alaya, who was like, I just want to marry Jaden someday. Nope, you're out of here. And she gets booted from the map. So and Poor Alaya didn't even finish him up. They couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. 158. <laughs> 158. Now, I don't know that 1 HP Alaya actually beats a reincarnated Leela in like an elongated 1v1, but it would have been cool to see. Either way, that match took less than two minutes. That, yeah, that was... was yeah, they just must, I think that um, they must have just liked our talk about vision cards and Aerith and Ayaka so mm. much that they're like, get this match over with. We got to get back to the real show, which is, um, yeah. So, it, what what am I trying to say here? Yeah. Would you, if you were, would you, okay, hold on. <laughs> Run it back. Run it back. Would you, would you say that that reflex was bad RNG? Would you say that... Would you run it back to look at your trust stones? Maybe get some reaction block rate in there. Yeah, reaction block all? rate's the answer, I think. I, I mean, I don't know. I think anybody who look, if you're trying to build an actual like top tier react trust stone set where you are not just taking any good passive trust stone that you see, but you are picking specific good ones, reaction block rates in there. There's no way. It is one of just the obvious best ones for exactly that reason for exactly that reason now maybe you could also argue like did you not have ice attack on your trust stones because if you did that was 158 damage worth of ice attack definitely did you not have missile attack up well probably maybe on a bow or a, i'm sorry a gun or something like that so i don't know there there's also two sides to this as well where i don't know if Cloud's team wanted to start straight across from Hiso's team, or mm. if they were hoping to be in the opposite corner, let Good Hiso's point. team kind of move towards them and then drop, you know, long range bombs on them. I don't know. It ended up working out and looked really cool, but we'll <laughs> never know. Not for that one. Now, I think that's the only thing I'd change. I don't know. I'd just do it again. I would just run it again. I would just dare, if I'm Cloud, I would just dare Hiso mm. to do the exact same thing. Instead, Cloud goes to, he's like, you know what? Fool me once, shame on me. I'm going to Dark. He pulls Dark Fina out. Dark Fina just was dead the last match. We didn't actually get to see her do anything. And she's usually a unit that wants at least that one turn to, to ramp up, get her re-raise on, or, you know, give her team those resistance buffs that she can give. We'll see. I, I imagine this is going to be a longer fight. I, uh, that was the record, right? That had to just be the record that we saw. Definitely before wasn't I was even. Fight. <laughs> yeah, that, I would I would give both players all my visual if that was a manual <laughs> fight. It was over that quickly. Now here we go. Speaking of the difference between manual fights and auto fights, one thing you can do in an auto fight that you really can't get away with as much in a manual fight is run tanks. Tanks are not great in manual because it's kind of hard to like force the enemy to attack you. Here we see two tanks, one of them being Roth, like the new premium dark tank in the game versus Cloud's Leela this time. So he so did change up his squad a little bit, still running um, the Sephiroth carry, but double tank Sephiroth. Now the silence from Leela right there actually lands on not dark Venus. So that's a little bit unlucky. And now Sephiroth's limit break is going to come out right onto two damage to both tanks backed up by sorcery strike from dark Vena. Big damage onto Roth right there. Sephiroth for Hiso, unable to get in range to do damage yet, but gets his shield online. Oh, the preemptive counterattack from Fina. It's a little RNG back on Cloud's side this time as the tank, as Roth goes down to the preemptive counter. But one thing you gotta be thinking right here if you're Cloud, look, yes, only one person on the enemy team is left alive, but it's Sephiroth and your team is grouped in the exact same formation they were grouped in last time. It's not gonna be Hell's Gate this time though, it's gonna be Sephiroth's Limit Break. This did a, this triple killed the team last time essentially. It does not triple kill everybody this time. However, it does remove Dark Venus Courage. So that's gone. They need to deal with Sephiroth before 
he gets another chance because I imagine the next chance he gets, he's ending things. Okay, Sephiroth on Sephiroth action. Oh, that's a kill right there. Sephiroth takes Sephiroth down, Cloud wins, and we go to game three. That was also a fast match, but it was appropriately fast. It was, um, yes, it was more than just two moves by Sephiroth and a few pew pews from the missile team. So that was great. That was a good example of both players going to the bench. <laughs> I liked what he so tried to do by bringing Roth out right there. Um, the real, I, and I don't know if this was a little bit unlucky. I don't actually know exactly why it happened, but did you notice he so Sephiroth path? He really ran off to the right to like, yeah. you know, walk up the uh, ledge and get in range. He had that one extra turn of buffing where he put his shield on, got that AP restore going, and that's fine. But by the time he did any damage, both of his tanks were already dead. So good syncing up of like agilities, good syncing up of the, the team death balled it. That's that death ball. You, know, you were talking about Ferris earlier. She wants to run in that formation. And as long as Ferris is running with other units who aren't getting popped, if she can do her move, pop her heel, she's keeping that whole death ball alive. Um, right there, Fina hung on by a thread, managed to start knocking some of Sephiroth's shielding off. Then uh, other Sephiroth, you know, people forget Sephiroth's got that big sword, but he's also got that strike damage sub job. And he pulled out the strike damage for what, 10,000 damage right there. That was impressive. Yep. Ah. All right, waiting for the third match. I bet both of them are running back. Pretty intense. I'd go PvP back to the missile team. We have today. If, if I'm Cloud, I just go back to the missile team again. I just want to see it. I want to see Elia win. Um, I like, I'm just, yo. Know, there's just something about, I, I think Ice Missile, people think, okay, look, if you're talking about elements in this game, Justin, I'll just ask you, which element would you say right now is in not the best spot? Because I think all of them are usable. I don't think there's an element in this game that is like year well, two Earth. But like, so everything is essentially usable, I think. But what is, what element would you say is hurting for a little bit? Could use a little love. Okay, well, let's say, I hope you don't say ice because we just got a nice ice unit. Well, I didn't ask you what, I I, I was going to say something <laughs> about ice, but not that. Okay. But I was supposed to see what you said. Um, I would they do you think a element is good because of one state you know like earth for example if you take bradley away from earth it is nerfed intensely significantly right so but they do have dialdo now earth has that's true yeah earth could use something like a new support unit or something like that so but a um, lot of other a lot of other elements they have options right but with yeah. something like earth you sort of start with bradley or dialdo then you go from there yeah and i so i i think it's like an interesting conversation to have if you're talking about like do you want to finish in the top thousand of arena but if you're going if you're looking at like top hundred arena earth teams right. they probably all have bradley so i just don't know if you can like it's like say like if you're doing like a football analogy it's like were, were the Patriots dynasty team a dynasty without Tom Brady? It doesn't matter. He was on the team. Um, and so Bradley is on Team Earth. And so I think that... But to answer your question, I would say... I, I would I would count the unit. I, I, I think you can't separate a best unit from the element. Like, what's... Dark is still... To be fair, though, Dark without Sephiroth is still good. It's not as good, though. Right, you have a lot of options. Uh, same with yeah. life. Obviously, those two elements have received the most amount of love in the development team. Um, yes. But I don't know. I think well, how do you feel about how do you feel about water right now? I think water is. I've never really thought that water was in a terrible spot. I know people will be like, "Oh, we don't have a good water expert." That's right. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've always liked it. I always run it. Um, I think. Maybe before the beginning of the year, before, you know, Amnelis or Perrine came out, it was a different story, but. Yeah, Perrine was the one for me that I felt like water, like, okay, you have a legit, like, <laughs> 100 cost carry now water. And, and we saw her already today doing really yeah. well. Her team ended up losing, but it was not her fault. Um, Ferris adds devil a lot. Uh-oh, we switch into the screen? Yeah, we are. Uh 
There it is. Okay, so there's Bradley and there's Elias. So Piso goes to the bench. Now, we we talked about, okay, I think it was probably safe to assume, especially considering that Sephiroth and Leela were the first round of reincarnations you could do. I imagine Hiso threw his scrolls into those, right? So we were probably looking at at least two fully reincarnated units right there. Mm -hmm. Now, Bradley is further down the road. Further down the road. Yeah. I, I, Me personally, I saved every scroll that I got until Bradley came out to fully reincarnate him. Um, I wonder, though, with a player like Hiso, who maybe, and we're just assuming, I don't know that he reincarnated those other units, but I'm just projecting here. Um is Bradley reincarnated? If so, he is even more of a monster than normal, and he's probably somebody who's bulky enough to survive like a couple rounds of missile from Ice Missile. But, may, I, I don't know, Ice Missile's scary good. I, this is what I was going to talk about. This is where I was like kind of leading with oh, those okay. questions. Is Ice Missile, I think, is just under... There's Balo. We mentioned <laughs> that we might see a Balo today. There he is. Now, do we get buffs? from Eliza and gang this time, or are they already in range like before? Curry can drop Frostbite like nobody else in the game. If he hits a Frostbite on a team that's a bunch of physical damage dealers, all of a sudden, it doesn't matter how good Bradley is if he doesn't have any AP for the whole fight. So we'll see. Now, unfortunately, Eliza's just bouncing around there kind of by herself. I hope we haven't disconnected. I hope we get to see this thing go live. I'm looking at the Discord. I don't see any messages there. I don't know if we have a little bit of a spectator bug here. Definitely something is up because no one has moved yet. So we'll see. I didn't get to see. It was Bradley, Balo, and someone else with them. Who was the third Earth unit, Justin? Do you remember seeing who that was? Mushroom. Sure. Queen. It was Queen Mashiri. Okay, so very good. That's a um, that's a strong team right there. It's a team that I have personally run a lot. I think Queen Mashiri works very good with those two. And what I, what we might not get to see, which is really unfortunate, but what I was hoping to see is can Balo survive a couple rounds of uh, arrows from the or arrows and missiles from the missile girls, and can Curry land that clutch frostbite? You know, take Bradley out of the thing. I don't know. So we're trying to see out right now if we froze, if one of the players froze, what happened. We'll let you guys know real quick if we are getting the room remade or if something happened and they played out. We shall see. I mean, sometimes Bradley is so fast, the client can't keep up, right? Like <laughs> he, he used CT up on the loading screen and it was already over. So that's, that is one. All right. I'm going to, while we're waiting here, I'll try to get a little info going for us. We know we're fighting missile. I'm going to assume there is some missile uh, penetration for the missile girls. But if we look at somebody like Balo, Balo walks into a fight with actually no missile resist. Just nothing. Not negative, not positive. He is just a regular old nah, nothing to missile. Mashiri, when facing three missile teams, walks in at 15%, so that's pretty good. And then King Bradley walks in with 20%. So, nice little bit of missile resist for that Earth team. Maybe something that Hiso was thinking about if he was considering, hey, these are really strong units. I know my opponent can play missile, so um, I'll just pivot to this and see what happens. All right, Justin, do we have any updates to uh, give the folks here? Um, yeah, it looks like... Just want to double confirm what happened is the official calling. Okay, got you. So, chat, who do you think won? Ooh, okay. Somebody in chat said they like chicken nuggets. I also like chicken nuggets. That's a good <laughs> well, call. I, I could probably almost guess who's... <laughs> yeah, it is. I was right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> TL Parks, you are known. You are a known commodity to Justin. So, okay. We're still just waiting for, like, double official word on what happened yeah. right here. So, just one moment... Okay, so it sounds like 
going with we're going with so he's though as the center here everybody has agreed okay. on that happening so the king bradley team picks up the wish win we could have seen it. yeah i wish we could have seen it as well i'm guessing what that means is like maybe no frostbites came through uh perhaps like bradley and mashri just lived through the initial onslaught and then once bradley gets in there if he has any health left and he starts popping off getting his haste getting his ct up it's really really hard to stop that train from rolling on earth is in a really good spot like we were talking about what elements people think might be weak uh nobody would say that about earth i don't think even if, and like you asked about, like, even if without King Bradley, you still have Oberon, Queen Mashiri. Those are, if not the toppest tier, the most tip-top tier, they are still definitely very strong. So I am sad to see the Alaya team drop, but Earth is an element that I do love. It's near and dear to my heart. So there we go. King Bradley team picks up the W. Congratulations. Good match. Both matches so far been uh, best of threes have gone to. Yep, that's true. So we're moving right match. along here. We got the next room set up. Uh, let's Excellent. Take a look at some of the player information. Let's get those cards on the board. We've got <laughs> Setzer here from the USA. Favorite character is Miranda, but once again, Winged Stern for the picture. We've seen a lot of pictures of Winged Stern. That's Somebody. True. Give me Wigstern in an actual fight. Like, bring him into the matches. He's plenty good. And then the message is, insert generic competitive message here. <laughs> Very motivational. Incredibly motivational from Setzer right there. So, that's Setzer. USA, Miranda, competitive message. Speaking of Miranda, back-to-back <laughs> -back favorite Mirandas. And this time, we get the picture of Miranda. So, this is Shadow. Shadow somebody who I know pretty well. From the USA, don't be afraid to try new things. I say no pretty well from the internet. Like, you know, it, it's always strange to talk about like knowing somebody online makes it think right. like you're your neighbor or something. But yeah, well, Shadow's somebody I'm familiar with. We um, know each like other. a lot of the players today. Huh? We know each other. We know each other. We know of each other. We for dined sure. together. How are you going to take that? Oh, away? no, we're talking you about me forgot? and you. I thought yeah, yeah, you were yeah. doing the generic, oh. like, the we thing still. Yeah, no, we did. We ate at a really <laughs> nice restaurant. That was great. Yeah, that restaurant was very nice. I, I feel bad I for the staff. If any staff out there is listening, I'm sorry oh, yeah. we stayed until like 1 a.m. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, our bad. so we're just jumping into the match. I forgot they were okay. waiting on me. Though. Oh, now look, I I'm very proud of both of these players. First of all, because both of them, like, look, Setzer, picture of Wingstern. There's Wingstern. Shadow, picture of Miranda there's oh, miranda and they and, tilted yeah. their hand there well not really because the room was set up way before we went to that that's right that's right yeah like the, the <laughs> other player didn't know and, and, ba and you, honestly i would assume the person whose picture i looked at would not play their picture because usually that's the case i am excited to see what miranda can do miranda's range with like her jamming thrust is very long and it thrusts very hard so we will see if she can you know, knock some sterns, knock some light units off this map. Miranda is a launch unit, correct? I believe she's been in the game since the I beginning. I don't know. Sometimes, like the beginning of the the like basically until Warrior of Light came out, like it's all sort of mashed together. Yeah. Well, okay. Now this is a Ferris as well. So we are going to see a Miranda Ferris Uni team versus Engelbert Wingstern and Valentine's Day Miranda. So it is Miranda versus Miranda, but it's two different Mirandas right here. Now Ferris back there with Uni going to cast a buff on Uni. Miranda's already in jamming thrust range, but she's actually going to go with a spell. So she has, I believe it's like Wadaraga Dispeller. It will dispel auto revive and has a chance of putting units to sleep. So I don't know for sure that that's what she's casting, but if I had to guess, she's probably looking for the sleep right here. And with where she is on this map, compared to where the enemy damage dealers are, she needs to land a sleep or two. She did not. Now she's in trouble. Convergence is going to come out. That does a lot of damage to her. She's a unit who's a lot better against magic damage than physical. But oh no. Okay, wait a second. Now, Valentine's Day Miranda is not going with an instant cast ability. Is going to channel a spell. If regular Miranda goes with a jamming thrust, Wait, Magic Reflex comes through. She does not go with the Jamming Thrust, but Deconstruction gets Magic Reflex. And then, wait, 
wait, just turn about being fair play and all that. Stern's going to reflex the next one. Miranda kills Valentine's Day, Miranda, but doesn't kill Stern because he reflexed after she reflexed. Here's Arrowfall from Uni. It does 129. That might have only been 129 damage. No, it was 1,200 damage to Engelbert, who will then go Sentinel on himself. So big defense spirit buff for Engelbert. His division goes down, so he's not dodging anything. No surprise. Miranda does die, but in the 2v1, Miranda goes one for one. That's pretty good. You've got to like that. Now, Ferris making her first appearance today. Pull Sildra out. Going to be the limit break right here. Big damage. 5-3-1-3. Three, three. That is pretty big damage to Engelbert. Not bad. He's chunked a bit, and she will actually lap him with the CT up from that. So she's going to get to... Well, she'll get to Elemental Chain anyway. Pirate Rind, it's a kill. She takes him down. It, it pops the courage. But there's what we're talking about. Sildra's Roar. Now, this is not the heal. This is not the healing version. This is the buffing version. She's a unit that does a lot of things when she hurts the enemy. If she has allies close to her, you just got to see one of them. You need uh, the recipient of a buff right there from Ferris. Now, Stern, he's buffing himself, trying to work his way back in. Uni's going to look for a sharpshoot on Engelbert. Respectable damage, 24-11. Uni's actually putting in some work right here. And now Ferris is going to get a chance to start hitting uh, Pirate Rind onto Stern. Good damage. Stern is chunked out. And remember, Stern had his re-raise removed by Miranda earlier in this fight. So even if he kills Ferris right here, Uni has a shot at, you know, taking him out with an arrow. We'll just have to see. Here comes the Limit Break from Wingstern. Really cool looking move right here. You know, straight from the cinematic of Season 3 of War of the Visions with all those swords. Uh, Ferris will live, so that's a big deal. Ferris is going to get another chance. Uni steps up, punishing Slow Arrow right there. 45-75. Big damage from Uni. Uni, very respectable in this match. The re-raise, I guess, was still on. I could have sworn I saw I thought it removed. I guess I'm crazy. Stern now. Here's the thing. When you kill Stern, he basically gets another turn, and he's going to take advantage of that and go knock Uni out of this fight but ferris will go next 31 70 and in a very 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 close match ferris takes down stern and the water team picks up the win over the light team uh and there was there was shenanigans reflexes on both sides i would say <laughs> rng I, I gotta say though i think rng worked out better for the water team mm -hmm. because had miranda not reflexed valentine's day miranda's spell she was dead and yep. then even though stern reflexed her wateraga uh, the Valentine's Day Miranda was did not, and so she went down. So, okay. There we go. Yeah, now, Water Rocket Dispeller does indeed dispel Auto Revive. I looked that up because I thought maybe I was wrong when I saw Stearns go down, but he must have recast it. He must have. Um, it, and that's got to be what happened there. Yeah, I thought I saw it pop up, but I, I wasn't actually sure. I'm not super familiar with his entire kit. Hold on. Unfortunately, yeah, so too late. No, you're good. So, um, it's it's Stern. Like, if you don't leave Stern's group buff on Wing Stern, he likes to self buff, and that's his favorite self buff to lead off with. So, it's called Reawakening, I believe, is the name of the skill. I'm looking that up right now. Yes, Reawakening. So, it gives him auto revive. And then, one of the reasons he almost came back and won that is when Stern auto revives, he CT ups for himself and gives himself slash attack up and accuracy. So yeah, Uni knocked him down, and then he just got back up, put his CT above Ferris's, and yeah. had Ferris and Uni been grouped, we might have been looking at a uh-oh uh situation. But luckily for Ferris, she was not standing next to Uni. And um, I gotta say, though, overall, unit I was most surprised slash impressed with was Uni. That was... Yeah, you know, I think if she did not, if she was not able to... If Uni was not able he, to take out that uh, unit or Engelbert there, I think the match would have gone a lot differently. But was surprisingly able sure. to pull down twenty five hundred damage. Yeah. Okay, so looking at Uni right here a little bit, I I just want to like, okay, now we might see Uni again. Shadow switches to Perrine, sets her stays with the um with the Stern. Perrine definitely could be a Uni still hiding back there. Definitely could also be a Ferris. I think Perrine and Ferris are two very good together. Justin, did you pull did you pull for Ferris? You did. You said you did, right? Oh yeah. Not really in a usable state, um, because wasn't really needed in okay. uh, Trials of Reckoning. So I got her there. So She's just sort of waiting. What I tend to do for a lot of collabs is I'll probably sit on like a thousand mind spheres before I sort of figure out exactly who I'm going to actually. Yeah, that makes like, sense. 
I, I still have not 140 Bradley or any of the uh, FMA units because I just don't know who I want. So I'm probably sitting on like over a thousand Mind Spheres for FMA because I don't That's know exactly smart. what I want to do. Okay, now here's Justin's favorite evade unit, Slime. So Slime does show up here with the striking duo. We've seen Edward Perrine something a couple times already today. The vision this card time it's between slime. these striking units is very good. Oh yeah, that is like, I think that vision card was one of the, it, it was one of the things that was one of the, uh, how do I want to say this? That vision card by itself, I felt like elevated strike meta to being real. And it's rare that you see one individual thing pull that off. Now, one thing about Slime, besides being a, a two, two, you know, 20% win rate evasion unit in big, quick pick, <laughs> it does have a lot of really good support abilities that it can do, like heal, and it can also bring people back from the dead. So we might get to see both of those things right here. Uh, Perrine gets chunked out a little bit, but the self-heal from Perrine will keep her in the fight. I need... I think if this strike team has a chance, Slime is going to need to pull off a revive on Ed. He, I, I think Slime will go for that. So he steps fail. up. There's Zing. It failed. So Ed, Ed has not been very lucky today when it comes to being revived. However, the Vortex Kick is big damage. 289 left on Stern. He tries to hit Perrine. She preemptively counterattacks him, though. Knocks him down. Pops the re-race. But watch the CT bar for Stern. He will go again right after Miranda. Once you kill Stern, it's not always the best thing ever. He's going to go Converges Plus right here. Crucially, though, nobody dies. But Engel and Engelbert? Sentinel? Where's Taunting Blade, Engelbert? That could be a problem. Slime's up next. What's Slime going to do? Going to go Hustle Dance, give Perrine and himself a little bit of that HP back. And then he runs away. That's very smart. Very big AI move right there from Slime. Vortex Kick. This is probably a double kill. Yeah, Miranda and Stern both drop. All the sudden, it is Engelbert versus two, and all of a sudden, it's Courage popped Engelbert versus two. Now, Retribution Drain's a real thing. He's just going to put his Courage back on. He's like, oh no, I feel like I'm going to die, so I'm going to just uh, give myself another round of Courage buffs right here. I don't know that that's going to be enough, Engelbert. Hustle Dance comes out. It's going to be another nice little big heal. Slime support really showing off here. Perrine punches uh, Engelbert, Courage popped, Retribution Drain comes out, Engelbert will heal himself. How big is this heal? 4698 for the 2100 point heal, but uh oh, here it comes. Zap, <laughs> paralyzed. Paralyze, at least. Engelbert gets paralyzed, <laughs> 4819, Perrine takes him down, and Shadow picks up the win. GG Shadow, I believe that is a 2 0, our first 2 0 of the night. Yeah. It, it, and honestly, that was a 1.5 versus 3 right there. Does a 1.5 versus 3. Yeah, you're right. Yes. Like, yes. Slime realistically failed a raise. Yeah. Healed maybe 5,000 HP total. And it paralyzed when it didn't even matter. You know, though, like, his... No, because his first <laughs> heal... His first heal on Perrine was a big deal. Like, that, when the well, five... That's why I gave it a 0. 0.5. Okay, okay. Well, it eva would Evasion Slime have done better or worse in that scenario? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think, okay, so one thing that I did notice is that Miranda was out of AP, basically right out of the gate. Yeah. She did an auto I'll attack on Slime and did not take it. Yeah, it's, um, so something with Miranda, it, again, like, when you see a unit that is a mage, right? Like, Miranda, yeah, she uses a sword, so she's like a sword mage, but you tend to think those units just have these, like, huge AP pools, so you mm -hmm. don't need to worry about bells and AP restore and all of that. But Valentine's Day Miranda is definitely not that way. Like, she benefits so greatly from having a couple turns, get her TP spells used, get her re-raise on, get her agility up, get her AoE resist, all those things. Then, if she can do that, she has enough AP in the bank to do a couple double slashes, maybe drop the limit break. Right there, she was straight into the fight. And once you're straight into the fight, you do a big AP skill, uh-oh, you're now auto attacking and that's not nearly and slime lives with barely any hp so that half <laughs> unit you know he hung in there for a while he was kind of half a tank too all right so getting ready for the next okay. previous second place new year's called did a video 
Uh -huh. Gears, auto. I'm I'm blank. Anyway, I don't know what we're talking about. I was reading chat. Oh, Suribu is coming up. He was second place uh, in the New Year's. Yeah, before Kiwi the took him down, right? Yeah, before the official tournament started, yes. the New Year's one, sort of like a beta test. Yeah. Sure. Well, and that was um that was so now we've seen both Kiwi play in the winner of that New Year's stream played in the official tournament, and now Suribu, the second place finisher in that, is back as well. So there we go. All right. So let's see. Do we have some? Do we have player cards for them? Can I break yeah, down their uh, pulling it up? I got a lot of back end changes. Oh yeah. So let's go into the player info here. Give me. There is a lot of um, technical work that goes into putting one of these things together. Yes. It might. It might. I, I think people don't appreciate it, but it is okay. So there's Cerebu from the USA. Favorite character Roth. Also wrapping Roth in the picture. Quickness is the essence of war. Yeah, you know, like we just, I was watching a documentary the other day about World War II and right through the forest real quick. It'll take you, you got to watch out. Little quickness buff on your tanks and all of a sudden you're past the defense and you're into, into Paris. Well, that was a, that was a, a very specific joke. But anyway, good message right there. Roth is definitely somebody we could see today. Now we have seen her once, but she lost. Um, just lost in kind of a weird way. It's a close match. Her Sephiroth kind of got outperformed by the other Sephiroth, so it's not necessarily her fault. Plenty good as a tank, top tier unit, and if if Roth's your favorite unit, you're living good right now. She's new. She's all about it. So there's Serebu breaking it down. Sir Roth was not Serebu's favorite unit the last time we saw him on the official stream because she wasn't out yet. So there we go. Hmm. And then Zeus. Now, Zeus repping Gilgamesh from the USA. It's your birthday on August 19th. Well, happy birthday, Zeus. And that is <laughs> awesome. So a little birthday present today. Let's see if you can win it for yourself. Um, shout out to your guild, Zantetsukin. Hey, you know what's really cool about that, too? That's the uh, limit break from a character in my favorite Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy VIII. I'm just going to, well, I'll leave that right there. Um... Yeah, so uh, that's awesome. A Japanese awesome. word you did say correctly. Well, I've only played Final Fantasy VIII about 37 <laughs> times. So that's, uh, <laughs> you know, back in the day, if you owned a video game on like your PlayStation, you played it, and then you're like, man, what do I do with my life? I guess I'll just play it again. Yeah, yeah that sounds you know, good. I was just thinking about that pretty recently. I was talking to somebody like, I don't know if somebody else had the same experience as me, but I would often like go to school and somebody would be like, oh, I just, you know, beat this game or whatever. And then it'd be like, can I borrow it? They'd be like, yeah, sure. And then you would stay up all night. You'd get so excited oh, to yeah. go to school tomorrow. They'd show up and be like, oh, I forgot. And you're like, bro, what do you mean I forgot? I've been thinking about this for 24 hours, literally. How could you the forget? The only about reason I came to school today was to get <laughs> yeah. that game. I'm going home. I'll see you tomorrow. And then the or next like, day they're like, oh, sorry. Like, okay, I'm just going to come over to your house and we're going to figure this out right now. Well, and you couldn't, like, text people back to the PlayStation <laughs> no, you 1 could. days. Today, you just text you them in the morning. Up like, and be like, hey, is Johnny there? And then she'd be like, one second. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, Johnny's dad. Can, can, <laughs> can, can, uh, is, is Johnny home? No. Who's this? N yeah. Never mind. Click. Yeah. Or you oh, just hang up as soon as you heard the parents answer. You're like, nope. Like, oh, yep, nope. <laughs> uh, did you ever have a. We had, my friends and I had code words, you know, like if we thought our parents were like on the phone listening to us, we had code words mm. we would say, like work them into sentences. And that meant like, hey, oh, okay, here we go. We're into it. Uh, Good. Now we get to that. see. You did not have that. Okay. No. Well, Serbu <laughs> is, <laughs> the code word for Serbu is Roth and uh, Roth's in there. So we might see a dark team coming out here. 2499 magic, 2400 uh, attack as well. So, okay, balance team. And then Zeus is bringing out the Reagan. So, okay, fire and ice. What you pointing at there? Uh, I see Justin. Suribu's using the uh, second place title. For the yes, PC from the tournament. <laughs> now, Suribu today has a chance to win another unique title. I wonder, hmm, they, he might get the same title twice. Because it's the same one, right? Um, maybe. I think it's decorated a little bit differently. Mm. 
I believe it is. Anyway, here we go. Leave this to me. Ice, dark, and wind resist buff from Reagan right there. Hey, that works out nicely because guess who you're against? A dark team. And then the slash and strike resist buff. It's like this team was built to beat Sephiroth. We'll see if the buffs that are anti-Sephiroth buffs are enough. Because it is going to be Roth, Sephiroth, and Leela. This is a team we saw earlier from Hiso. It was actually the team that Hiso lost with. Now, Valade's up next. He's going to go Ice Vitalization. Uh, accuracy protect man it is like exactly if you wanted to just draw up a group of buffs that said hey we're gonna try to be anti sephiroth with these things you got strike slash dark and protect all online let's see what sephiroth could do hell's gate comes out 3985 uh, you know what for sephiroth that's not a huge number i'd say those buffs worked out pretty good now how's roth gonna do taken against reagan here he goes, gonna break out the limit break right here. Both swords, cross slash, slap, slap, slap. Oh yeah, that's tanking right there. That was only about a total of 2,000 damage. Not a ton. Ferris is up next. She steps forward, also going for Roth, and has grouped with Reagan. This is Sephiroth's dream if he can penetrate those defenses. He's got two grouped up characters to start hitting. This time, we're going to get 6361 big damage from Ferris right there. She gets her CT up, but it will not get her in front of Sephiroth. Blade's going to step up right here. Barbara Vitalizer, Agility Attack, Magic Up. Man, I said those words badly, but everybody's group for Sephiroth. Here we go. Are the buffs enough? Octo Slash is coming out. Slap, 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 slap. Jump to the sky. Land. Big damage. Look away. Screen goes blank. Hey, they all live. Now, Roth has respectable damage as well. Reagan does get his self heal, so that will probably save him right here. Roth is going to hit all three of them with her triple hit attack. Valade goes down. Yes, Valade goes down. It's Reagan and Ferris versus the whole dark team. The whole dark team is grouped, so if they can find that AoE damage, they could be in business. There's Ferris with Wave Cutter coming out right here. Not one of her moves that procs a follow up attack. And then Mountain Dive comes out. Man, removes the haste, but the dark team is just too much HP. I liked what reagan and ferris's team was trying to do but ferris is now out of ap dark has two tanks that are still alive leela is good at silencing silence them both it doesn't really matter neither of them are mages but with only six ap ferris could just auto attack sure it hit pretty hard but that's not that's, that's not what you need um i would say servu's favorite unit right here Ra, uh definitely pulling her weight she tanked the entire first round of the enemy, still standing, still killing people at the end. Reagan's out of AP. He hits for 4,000 with an auto attack. I mean, that's impressive. But Sephiroth with 34 uh, AP left will just cut him down. 7,200 damage. Reagan goes down. And Serebu picks up the win. GG. GG. All right. Off well. Yep. Uh, I think we just had an interview that I did with Serebu go up on YouTube yesterday. We can go check that out. Talked a little oh, bit man. about his formations, how he picks them out, that sort of stuff. So, yeah. So, that video is some love. Also, had one with Kiwi Stings earlier in the week. I think that went up on Mondays. Man, it's Very like the insane. week of Serebu over here. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because he told when I did the interview with him, which was like last week, mm -hmm. uh, we were chatting a little bit and he was like, oh, you know, I hope I get into the tournament because I applied for it. So, I'm glad to see that he was able to. Yeah, me too. Good to see somebody come back from, uh, you know, gosh, that feels a long time ago, doesn't it? Like the last, uh, that was our first tournament. First that was tournament. In the end of January, I think. Yeah. We, only we were talking have... about, we were talking about the bunny that was on there because that was the animal for the Lunar New Year. Right. Dude, was that this year? God, I don't even remember. Oh, it's been a minute. <laughs> you know what's crazy is I remember when we started this whole like this first circuit of the official circuit. I was mm -hmm. um, the first circuit of the official circuit. Wow. Um, <laughs> I was like, man, that's so many tournaments. I'm not even going to think about the end of it yet. After yeah. this one, there's three more and then the finals. Yeah. So the Ovis, the Ovis ones, that's the next tournament. I believe the signups for that actually start today. Yes, that is right. Yeah. They're either open now or they open up after this is over. I'm not 100% yeah. sure on that. Yep. And um, that is a manual one for Europe. Yes. Oh, that's going to be bright and early for me. Uh, Yeah, me too, probably <laughs> then. Okay. Well, I, I actually prefer um, 
Yeah, you know, as somebody with a little child, bright and early is just my wheelhouse. So mm. that kid does not. Sleep I mean, you also in. go. To, you you go to school before the children yeah. do that sort of stuff. Oh yeah. I sort of roll. I, th my alarm goes off. I'm like. Oh my gosh. My laptop, and I'm like, get to work. <laughs> you know what's crazy <laughs> is like. I like uh, you get to the point where like 7 a.m. feels like sleeping in because you're like, oh, I got to wake up for school at seven. And it's, it's like, yeah, right. I wish my kid would sleep till seven. Parents out there know. They know. Shoutcasters out there understand what we're doing. Filling the space. Talking about Indeed. things. Um, but we are jumping into the second match here. Excellent. Da -da -da. So oh, is it just a run back? Cerebu is using the same units and same gear same vision cards espers because those numbers are identical um zeus 3806 1831 i it don't remember it I mean, could just be based on the composition i think it could be the same yeah now i imagine it'll change something like unit placement something like that maybe like, he felt like a lot of rng last no Pretty it, this is <laughs> yeah if anything, Sephiroth did not reflex anything. So, um, uh-oh. We'll see. Both players are ready, so somebody will hit that start button, and we will see what goes down. I always try to time that to, like, the beginning of the match. It, yeah. It, oh, it they're actually works. waiting for me. I got to give a thumbs oh. up. We're good. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, you... Yeah, all right, all right. Oops. That's okay. I did it again. I think I've heard that saying before once. Mm. Maybe. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Now, this could be our final match of the quarterfinals. This match or well the next be, yeah. match will be. Then we have two more best of threes for the semifinals, and then a best of five for the grand finals. So, does Cerebu win this match and put himself on the path to another grand finals where he can try to finish first instead of second? Maybe. I don't know. It's okay. the same so units. The same. Oh, and a okay, that's a lot different. A lot different for sure. Like all, you cannot get further to the left side of this map <laughs> than uh than <laughs> Zeus's team is. So Ferris and Reagan gonna start buffing each other up. Again, all of those resist. They did well, like those buffs did their job. Sephiroth was not hitting them for 10,000 damage, like we saw when he one-shot the ice team. Still if the goal was to try to bring him immediately forward, prevent him from hasting himself, he did still get that haste off. That's pretty scary. Roth moves up, though. Roth was unable to buff this time. She just runs up on the cliff and immediately will start tanking. But the hasted Sephiroth will now... I think he's going to be able to engage right here. Yes, he is. So Spirit Breaker comes out. That was not very much damage. Sephiroth down to... He was at 70 when he cast that. We'll have to see what he's at AP-wise afterwards. Reagan's up next. Now, Reagan led with his Go limit break last city. time. This time, he's going to cast the uh, King Bradley TMR, I believe that was. Momentum comes out. And then look how they're kiting backwards this time. I can't imagine this was, like, actually on purpose. But the A, <laughs> okay. This is crazy. Now, this is either some, like, actual 4D chest from Zeus right here, where he, like, was like, look, my youths are going to move up. They have, they can't jump up on that cliff. So what they said they're going to do is suck Roth over the cliff into the trap. And then Valade's going to go tank Sephiroth. I, okay, wait a second. The trap just got a lot weirder when Valade ran up there to stare Sephiroth in the face. Sephiroth just went from being unable to hit anybody to probably knocking Valade out of this fight. Ve oh, wait, no, he's going to instead go for Reagan. That probably works out good for the Reagan Ferris team, because Reagan will live through that and heal himself back to full. Now, as her blade strike, big double slashing move right there, followed up by Ferris's pirate raid. Yo, she lives, and she lives by this much, just barely. Oh man. Now here you go, Valade gets the buff, and then he casts zombie transformation. This Valade is insane. We don't, nobody knows what he's doing. Now, Reagan will finish off Roth. So Roth goes down, and the uh, ice water team trap does pay off. Hell's Gate comes out from Sephiroth. It's a ton of damage, but Sephiroth is out of AP. He is at six. Leela, though, could potentially finish off Reagan if she has the damage. She steps up. She's going to do a silencing spell. That's enough. 3,100 damage will put Reagan down. It's a 2v2. It's Ferris Valade versus Sephiroth Leela. 
I like Sephiroth Leela unless. Oh, it's we been a rough day a for full life. Race it's been all. a rough day <laughs> for full life. Oh my gosh. It was almost Zeus with the 3v2 turnaround, but instead full life misses. Okay, Ferris though will have a fair chance here of take teeing off on Sephiroth. She's going to step forward. Here we go. It's going to be Pyro Onslaught. She actually skips past him, goes for Leela. So having that second tank going to pay off big right here. Now she will pull out Sildra and that heal will put her whole team back to full HP. So she does have access to some sustain, some healing if she could keep surviving what Sephiroth is putting forward. Mind Fortress comes through for Leela. So there's the uh, anti-magic buffing right there. Might help if Valade ever feels like trying to do some damage, but we never know what Valade's going to do. His AI is all over the place. Okay, Sephiroth's up next. Out of AP, so he has to just auto attack. Ferris down to her last 14. We'll go with Wave Cutter. Decent damage onto the Leela, who is barely hanging on. Ferris runs to the right. Valade's up next. Curata coming through. Ferris hanging in there. She's back to full HP. Um, it is Sephiroth's turn. He's back at 37, uh, 37 AP. He will hit both of them. Belade gets popped. So down goes Belade, but re-raise. Remember when he cast that earlier? I kind of do. He puts it. It was the zombie TMR that he had. That's right. So he's back in it. Now, Leela's turn. Leela gets magic reflex. So here's a little RNG coming through. Belade lives via magic reflex and Ferris and Belade fight another day. Leela lives through Ferris's auto attack, so that's not ideal. Ferris running out of AP. What can Valade do? You need a trick here, Valade. The trick was not go stand next to your teammate. I don't think, unless Sephiroth's out of AP again, which he is, but guess what doesn't cost any AP? A summon. There you go. Multi-hit attack. Although, guess what? Guess what? Not only did that not kill anybody, it also did not generate any more AP for yourself. So, Ferris will slap Leela down. Leela comes back with a re-raise. A lot of re-raises in this fight. Leela, silencing spell. There's the double kill we all knew was coming. Leela with the silencing spell double kill. Serebu picks up the win. A 2-0 match. And even though it was a run back, that one was much closer than the first one. There was a lot of uh, different things happening. But yeah, Roth really and his... It was. It was. We got to see a lot of what Ferris's potential is there with those heals had full life landed on reagan and had ferris been able to stand next to him keep popping him off i feel like that slash team probably picks up uh picks up the win but full life missed that's how it works and uh sarah Boo picks up the victory gg yeah so what i think is interesting from this last match is um leela is so slow that like her, her intention is always to be a tank but i feel like she never actually tanks anything until like the last 50 percent of the match um <laughs> and in this instance it's actually worked out pretty well so yeah she was so far back they, <laughs> yeah. they just had to look past sephiroth they're like okay forget about sephiroth for a little yeah. bit we've got this leela to deal with yeah that was great Ooh, okay so now we have our uh we have our semi-finals set up and ready to go yep so we're actually going to yeah. be throwing to a break here in a moment ah um, okay so take this opportunity to get a snack pet your cat drink some water go to the bathroom do whatever you think you need to do the break is going to be about 10 minutes long yeah in the meantime we'll be right back in about 10 minutes and then we'll continue on with the semi-finals about yeah. halfway done here at the war divisions final fantasy brave xvs championship 2023 you all very shortly.
The moon and stars are divided by malicious intent. One that will call forth the radiance of destruction upon these lands. What is that supposed to mean? I cannot say for certain, my lord. I merely relay what the stars whisper to me. War of the Visions, Final Fantasy, Brave Exvius. Does the prophecy foretell destiny? This is a tale of those who defy their fate. Battle System. The order of action is determined by speed, irrespective of alliance. The turn order of ally and enemy alike is displayed on the left. Units move and jump values indicate their mobility on the field of battle. Knights and soldiers may not be adept at vertical movement, but their repeated physical attacks are a force to be reckoned with. Dragoons and thieves, on the other hand, can press the advantage on uneven terrain with their physical prowess. Strategize your timing and movements to claim victory. Jobs and abilities. Select from three jobs to set as a unit subjob, thereby augmenting their main job with subcommands. The abilities available in battle will change depending on the subjob set. Interaction with other players. Friends can lend you their aid on your journey. Hone your skills and prepare for the clashes to come. Those who rely solely on their eyes will overlook what is of true import. Should one choose to live on, even though one suffers in despair, or should one seek death to afford one's soul its respite? War of the Visions, Final Fantasy, Brave Exvius. Now available. This unbearable, insufferable noise. But it won't be long now. The world we seek will soon be upon us. Thrive on the silence of the darkness's sweet embrace. I suppose you can call me the Dark Witch lurking in the deep abyss. Don't be like that, Rafi. <sighs> finding someone in this crowded place is like finding a needle in a haystack. What? You mean they tricked us? They're the ones who are meant to be our foes. Oh, endless void awaken. It's our duty, okay? Don't interfere. The dark craving for blood and destruction that rests in my accursed left hand. I grow unable to restrain it.
The moon and stars are divided by malicious intent. One that will call forth a radiance of destruction upon these lands. What is that supposed to mean? I cannot say for certain, my lord. I merely relay what the stars whisper to me. War of the Visions, Final Fantasy, Brave Exvius. Does the prophecy foretell destiny? This is a tale of those who defy their fate. Battle System. The order of action is determined by speed, irrespective of alliance. The turn order of ally and enemy alike is displayed on the left. Units move and jump values indicate their mobility on the field of battle. Knights and soldiers may not be adept at vertical movement, but their repeated physical attacks are a force to be reckoned with. Dragoons and thieves, on the other hand, can press the advantage on uneven terrain with their physical prowess. Strategize your timing and movements to claim victory. Jobs and abilities. Select from three jobs to set as a unit subjob, thereby augmenting their main job with subcommands. The abilities available in battle will change depending on the subjob set. Interaction with other players. Friends can lend you their aid on your journey. Hone your skills and prepare for the clashes to come. Those who rely solely on their eyes will overlook what is of true import. Should one choose to live on, even though one suffers in despair, or should one seek death to afford one's soul its respite? War of the Visions, Final Fantasy, Brave Exvius. Now. All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to the War of the Visions Final Fantasy Brave Exvius Championship 2023 Wazette Cup. We are in the semifinals now. We just concluded with the quarterfinals, so we will be going through some even more intense PvP action here as we get into final matches. So, uh, let me go up and throw the bracket. I said that in kind of a weird order, but let yeah, me throw yeah. the bracket up here so you guys can see. There We're it is. going to be going Rufio and Hiso Hiso. They're going to be going into the finals, and then Shadow and Surbu shortly after that. Got some intense matches coming up, so pretty pretty good. I think it'll be good. I like, I, Especially thinking back to um, Hiso's match earlier, It again, thinking about reincarnation and the mm -hmm. difference it can make that okay because like the, the reason i bring that match up in particular the sephiroth when he just turned around and obliterated the entire ice team get 158 right. health 158 <laughs> like that could be one more reincarnation so mm -hmm. for even i'm not even saying like max reincarnating unit it, a unit is necessarily important but like maybe and maybe that one was i think it probably was because sephiroth was such a popular reincarnation unit such a meta unit visifor being the good guild that they are you know top of the tier list and stuff i think he probably was but if if he was say he'd only been half reincarnated he's dead and that fight goes a different way right. and we saw how match two went so it could be a completely different scenario so uh it, i have a bad habit of sitting on ur scrolls oh yeah man. um yeah, because I just I don't like the, the, the like that commitment feels hard for me. <laughs> yeah. But if it's a unit that I'm using in competitive PvP over and over and over again, and I have the mind spheres and I have the materials and I have the scrolls, hey, you never know when 158 HP might just win you the fight, yeah, like it true. did right there. And HP, or yep, or I was gonna say, or a few more attack stats would have taken care of that 158. Right. HP right yes <laughs> maybe a, a lia with a little bit but but yeah true the um one thing about reincarnation is i don't think reincarnation is as good for 
Well, okay, I'll just give you my opinion on this. You can tell me what you think, too, while we're waiting for the room to get up. Um, I like it on tanks a lot because I feel like there's a ton of health in there. Um, and I just feel like, man, if I could just get that much more HP, if I can get three, four thousand more health on my, on my Roth, on my Dialdo, it just makes them look so daunting. Like, man, good right. luck cutting through 18 and a half thousand of Dialdo's health points. Now, a, a <laughs> unit like, you know, Bradley or Sephiroth, who's up there trading back and forth, it's probably also just as valuable on them. Mm -hmm. But you think about those, like, think about an SR tank like little Leela. Man, that's a lot of health for her. Right. Like, all of a sudden, she's a very healthy girl. And so, yeah, there we go. That's my thought on that. I don't know, like supports. I've never reincarnated a support. I did Aerith. I think okay. I did about fifteen or twenty on her. I was like J plus six guard stick, one forty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't remember, even remember what yeah. else. <laughs> Does she did, live? Okay, so listen. I did. I threw a bunch <laughs> of scrolls in her. I used my uh, what are they even called? The little heart crystal, heart quartz, heart. Yeah, yeah, quartz. I think that's, I don't know, I don't have it, yeah. For the plus six guard stick, just so she could yep. do this in the back. <laughs> Aerith, go! Oh, I was using, um, I was using Sylvie in Guild Wars the last little bit. Okay. I've been trying to play with some, some light teams. And on a long map, like most of the time, Sylvie is just back there and she's like, re-raise. Magic shield, <laughs> TMR buff, magic shield ran off. Yeah, Sylvie's like, somebody Sylvie. that I haven't used very much. Oh man, she suffers from um she suffers from Aerith syndrome. Like get in there and go fight Sylvie. Um okay, yeah, I just got so... her one twenty. Wait, oh, I, okay, wait, I think we misspoke. Did, didn't, did Jeff win? Did Jeff beat Rufio? I was, I, I'm not a hundred, I don't remember a hundred percent. So I was going off of the bracket that we have on Battlefly and it seems like maybe. A okay. Uh, either way. Yeah. I, yeah well, I mean, yeah, the, the right person is going to like, right. <laughs> still be in this fight. But yes, we are receiving information and I think some of the information um, might have been, yeah, that looks correct. I'm also being pinged on things. Yep, yeah, and that's what I the apologize. pings are too. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to remember everything that's that's happened. Yeah. Well, especially when we're having such a uh, heated discussion about <laughs> Aerith and, um, you know, Sylvie's AI. Either way, feel free to get the room made by the players there. There we go, Jeff and Hiso. Not Rufio and he so there we go. Apologies, sorry, I'm sorry. Rufio. Somebody was trying to hook Rufio you up. going, yo. Rufio's like, yes, all <laughs> right. <laughs> For some reason I'm winning. Cool. Uh, anyway, I really like supports. Um I have a so Ayaka is somebody that I used to use like way back in the day. Oh One yeah. One of the only people that can use two limit bursts too, which is um her and King Elda, correct? Uh, I... Or did I just make that up? I thought it was somebody more recent. Like much more recent. Hmm. I'll check. Well, anyway, okay, you keep going. I'll look. I was just going to say, um, I used to use her like way back in the day, and I think she just very recently got her 140. Um, so I've been thinking about if I should take that plunge or not. Um, but I also just pulled uh, Lena. And people are like, oh, Ooh. it's the same one. So oh, I want quick pick people to watch out i'm gonna <laughs> get have both of them here very soon with my image <laughs> like wait a second it's 140 ayaka and 140 lena and <laughs> june and you're like good luck killing this team we're going to turn not june that's two meta that's oh okay so let's Line. see why not halloween little lila just go all healers i was thinking about that um okay but i think that's also two too much because they're all the same element i don't know back in the day i used to run uh yuna and Aerith and Aya. what did it kill anything no no it never okay, okay. it never worked <laughs> maybe a couple uh, times just through your sustain 
Okay, if you want off meta options here, but you want to stay in the element, Yerma, super off meta. Although she wouldn't live to be healed. Um, let's see. Varouche is a really cool option. Do you have a leveled up Varouche? I don't think so. Oh, that's too bad. There's Varouche is a guy who I've always really wanted to use. Maybe his like transcendence will be so good that he's usable all the time. I mean, he's usable now, but like mm -hmm. maybe it'll maybe it will allow me to work him in. Cause I, I love the the blade soul idea. I just love that kit. I love the like you know slashing magic type. You know, Valentine's right. Day Miranda is a better version of Varouche. Um, so yeah. Realm Scourge, how's your Realm Scourge? Got it done. I have Three. not done it yet, but it kind of sounds like I lucked out not doing it. Uh, it's tough. So, a, a certain poison. Oh, there's poison shenanigans you can do? Uh, yeah, people are using uh, Liv. What's her name? Liv Livia. Yeah, yeah so... the Earth MR unit. Really? So with Dark Odin, you can get over the resist on him. Basically, protect her until she poisons him, and then you. <laughs> <laughs> that but like honestly how cool is that how yeah, cool i mean is that's it? the spirit of the game right so. that's the spirit of the game <laughs> we uh we did it on stream the other day and we had three flag glassies and an ayaka and that yeah, was I our heard, team I, that's what made me think of ayaka um okay she had a bit of a resurgence here <laughs> although it sounds like it was unfortunately cut short i think a healer is still probably maybe needed yeah, I unless like I a four Bradleys with blood swords, then they just heal themselves and our Bradley. <laughs> so like you could actually just hit auto on that one, I think, and it's fine. I think you need to pop bells and then you can hit auto and then four Bradleys with unlimited AP and blood sword cannot. Yeah, that die. sounds nice. Yeah. But I mean we took it down. The um new players, good luck, man. You all need some they, it's, their boon has come. They just need to find somebody. They need Olivia and just three people to just run interference. Because <laughs> it's not 100%. <laughs> I think that it maxes out at like 29% chance that it lands. So you got you got a couple turns possibly. That's disgusting. <laughs> okay. But yeah, we're just waiting for the room to be set up here. Make sure everything is good to go. And... We'll be jumping on into the PvP action. Yes, sir. Oh, do, 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 do. Um, I'm trying to. I'm oh, sorry. I got a whole bunch of messages when I said the wrong person's name, and now I'm just trying to like click on all of them so I can. I actually do need to receive some messages. Right. During you know during this so. Trying to just sort through what is it's relevant been sorted, right apology. now. Apology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Secret word, no okay. secret word this time. Unfortunately, if you're here looking for the secret word, uh, the time has actually passed. And to sign up for the reincarnation scrolls, you had to do the pick. That form has unfortunately already been closed. I uh, did not. I did not get it in time. I don't think. Yeah, my me neither. I just. Added. Okay, well, I mean, I don't... I'm going to say Angle my Burn energy... hasn't really been that popular in the previous auto. No. I'm a little surprised to see him suddenly showing up again. When did He's he get been... his 140? Did it happen between the last tournament and now? I don't remember. No. Engelbert's, had... Engelbert's been good for a while. I, d right. man, I don't know why he's all of a sudden <laughs> here. Huh. And then Miranda's been out for a while, too. Sweetheart uh, Miranda is a surprise to me. Like yeah. I love that girl, um, Baby J. My my son's account, it it features her sh prominently, and so I've been having a lot of fun playing her. So I'm very happy to see her at like this top tier of uh, an event. Mm -hmm. But I am very surprised. Lot. Yeah, it hasn't just been the same person in multiple fights because we haven't had the same people. Yet. You know, I feel like there's been a lot more light played today. I feel like there's been a lack of light played in the past, and maybe that's just because we've been getting players who don't like light or something. Okay, but so light... they're saying, Chad is saying that he did get his one. Very recently. Recently? Two weeks ago. Uh, yes. 
Ah, a lot of stuff has happened in the last month. It's been a busy month. We're Duff jumping takes. on in here. There we go. Oh, there's the big man on campus right there. It's Balo coming through. So, okay, we got Jeff rocking Balo into Hiso's little Leela. So, both players capable of backing these characters up with 100 cost units. So, for Hiso, we've seen in the past it, that you, those units be Sephiroth, Dark Fina. For Balo, I would anticipate seeing Bradley and something. I didn't see the magic set there, but it could be Bradley D. Oh, it's the double tank Bradley. So, Dialdo, okay, Balo, so look, yeah, Bradley. We, we were talking about Earth. Here's the only two good Earth units. You can go on. No, it's, well, <laughs> Queen Mashuri and Oberon have something to say. Um, and then uh, Eileen, excuse me. But, okay, anyway, here's Jeff. Jeff's standing there. We are waiting to see. Did we get a little bit of a connection problem again here? I don't know. We got Bradley. We got Dialdo. We got Balo just kind of staring at everybody. We're coming off of a break into a, ugh, come on, load in Jeff and he so please we don't want another delay but we might have one we'll see maybe it'll just pick up and start running all the time maybe one of the players dropped we're looking right now to see if the um, judges are still in the game so we'll see things like uh, they are okay um all right well we'll get back to you on that one anyway we'll see maybe a i will now something I will now pull up a list of Earth units. We don't need to have this, this. discussion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you know what is something that's interesting? Speaking of the element of Earth, and a unit that is very good for Earth that does not get a lot of talk is Moraga. Oh, oh. wait. I was just going to no, say... Okay, I, thought you, I thought you were cueing me into like, oh, we're back into it. I was like, sweet. No, I'm but sorry. No. Okay. I was just going to so, say that I really expected Noctis to have like a... Uh, like a a first wind, not even a second wind, but I really expected him to have like a first wind because um, he had that extra hit, and I thought you know he might be like yeah. a really good uh, Starlight Ellen account. Well, and you know what's weird is like then what's been added to the game since Noctis are units like Bart's with that follow-up attack that they give other units on their team. Okay, here we go, we're back into it. Here's Bradley killing Sephiroth. Yep, it is Bradley killing Sephiroth. Sephiroth goes down, Bradley's still staying in there. Little Leela comes through, silencing spell on the entire team, but it's not enough damage. And something that Bradley does a lot is increase his own CT. He just did it right there. Okay, Dialdo runs forward, 410 damage. That's not very much. Bradley's gonna do a little more than that, 2450. And Jeff puts down Hiso's dark team in the first match. Bradley is good. There, I All said right. something non-controversial. Sometimes I say things and people are like, you're an idiot. Engelbert just got his upgrade or, you know, things that might be controversial. Bradley is good. That is not as a non-controversial statement. So there we go. Okay. You said Bradley's good? Bradley's good. King Bradley. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, I thought you were saying something maybe slightly controversial and you just said water's wet. Yeah, exactly. Right, okay. Sometimes I like to keep it pretty <laughs> obvious. Um... Especially after uh, apparently making a mistake about Eaglebert, which, okay, it's, it's not two weeks ago, though. Come on, it had to be longer than that. Or I have no sense of time at all. Anyway, GG to Jeff. I'm sad we missed the setup for that fight. Yeah. Um, Fina must have got sniped again. And I feel like that's been a little bit of a thing for her. I feel like she has not, maybe it's this map, it's just kind of an awkward size for her. I'm not super familiar with PvPing on this map. The, the thing I remember most about this map is there's a, is it a selection quest fight? It's a, it is a, there is a fight, in a PvE fight in this game that is a tough PvE fight. And it's on this map. And man, that is like my biggest memory of this thing. It's like dealing with range height on top of all those little cliffs with the, the little rip, the valleys in there. So I know that about this map, but man, Dark Fiend is not loving it. I know that too. So if you think back to maybe like a map, maybe when you were starting out or something, like, do you have any nostalgia for any maps in the game? Oh, yeah. Okay. And it's kind of sad because you can't even like, so for PvP maps, the original mm -hmm. arena map, um, like the, the, the one you can't one? even play. Yeah, the very first one. Remember, it was literally just like, I don't remember the, oh, 
Um, it was, you just started on a little bit of a raised ledge, and then it was just flat in the middle, and there were some pillars. You can't even PvP on it anymore. You can't even pick it to PvP on, I don't think. It's not ever come back. It was very bland, but, like, we were <laughs> on that map for a really long time. And I just have these memories of, like, stern shurikening people to death on that map. And then, okay, here's one. Here's one. You remember the map? Again, it's not in the game anymore. You started on two sides of, like, a canyon? Not yeah, a canyon. It, I think it was were, literally it, called canyon. Was it? No, so. no, not canyon. This oh. is one's inside. It's inside, and you there was like paths across. Like there was a hole in oh. the middle of the map. And do you remember what I'm talking about? Okay, so was it wintry? No, it's indoors. Oh. It's like inside of a castle. I don't know. Maybe chat. Maybe I'm doing a what, very poor what? job yeah. explaining <laughs> this map. But it's a very old map. It's one of the first maps that I ever made YouTube videos on. And so, like, for me, that holds a special place. Because, like, I, I did a video where two Ayakas were against each other. And this was pre-you-could-turn-off-skills day. Right. And Ayaka, back in those days, used to um, like to try to cast Immobilize on her opponent. Yeah, you could now, not You could not unlock... Oh, oh, this room's dead. Um... Yeah, you could not turn Immobilize off. And so, like, back in the day, the best Ayakas in the game never learned the skill. You literally just didn't pick it in the board. Because if you picked it, if she was in range of somebody, she would go try to Immobilize them. And so, in this fight, there was uh, two Ayakas against each other, and they just ran directly next to each other on the map, and repeatedly immobilized each other until they were out <laughs> of that spell. <laughs> just over and over and over again. <laughs> and then, um, and then, mean, meanwhile, their teams were on the other side of the map fighting each other, and they never healed them. And it was great. So mm -hmm. you know who uh, you know who Ayaka always makes me think of? It's from another game. I'm not going to say the name of the game. There's three lanes. Mm -hmm. She's a goat. She has a staff. Ah. Uh. As healing and silencing, mm -hmm. you know who I'm talking about? Oh yeah, yeah. A you know, silence the whole, or can heal the whole map with a R button. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't mm -hmm. know if that ability is still around. Anyway, um, I remember playing her sure. one time, and I was like stuck inside of some minions. Like they like literally physically stuck me, and I was uh -huh. like spamming my star ability, and they, <laughs> they actually <laughs> killed me. <laughs> that always makes me think of Ayaka. Yeah. Yeah, that, that unit in that game, definitely not one of the higher DPS units. <laughs> okay. Okay, jumping on into the next room here. For real this time. I Maybe Waiting it's something the, like... Uh, sometimes it is, like, maybe certain players are in a spot where we have a bad connection with them or something. Because I do yeah. feel like... Um, when we crash with one, with a certain player, sometimes that crash follows that player throughout the tournament. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes it's just something to do with that. Okay, you know, speaking of Noctis. Okay. Noctis still does not have his Master Ability 2 for, uh, for us yet. Right, I don't think that collab has ever come back. Okay, so when it does, correct? if it, if, if slash when it does. Uh, um, maybe it did. Did it? Yeah, I like well, I've seen I don't know. RNA recently. Well, I think he we, can, you... we we saw RNA in a previous tournament, which you, is kind of weird. Yes, but that's what I'm. You can that's... ex Noctis, but he just needs a lot of. Um, look, if you only have master ability one, you are uh, uh, basically two master abilities behind because you're missing the 140 and the uh, master ability two. So if he could get a really good one of those at some point. Maybe you're right, because with as much re-raise and courage as in the game, especially courage, Noctis is great at killing units with courage. Sometimes re-raise will bring you back with enough HP that you, like, live through um, a follow-up attack, but courage is one HP every time, so you are going right. to drop. All right, just waiting for a small issue here. We'll be jumping back in. Fill in the air. Or us, yeah. Mr. Oh, yeah. here. Yeah. I'll tell my little story about Moraga now. So okay. something that I've discovered again on my like on my son's account is if you want to do Earth Selection Quest, 
Like, if you want a UR Earth unit, like a tank, right? Because we're talking about how good Dialdo is. Moraga is not Dialdo, but he's very good. Especially against physical damage, Moraga is very good. If you look at Earth's unit roster, uh, MRs in particular, uh, you've got Galzak, who at some point very soon will be added to the um, the what, part of the game where you can go get him whenever you want. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? What's that called? Sorry, I was reading Yo. a message. What? <laughs> no, you're good. Something comes out, and then later it gets put into the part of the game where you can just go get it whenever. Oh, the archives? Like, archives, yeah. The so Dialdo, um, Galzak will go to the ar part play and archive pretty soon. So he'll be farmable. Etra is in there somewhere. She's farmable. Um, you have Balo, who had as an event where you could get him to 140. MR Mott is just always in the game, so you could go get him. And then you have um, Livio. Is that Balo event still? It might be over with, but I'm assuming like players did it. It was right. very accessible. Um, and then who else am I thinking of? I think there's like one more. Uh, well, no, then when you do the first Earth Selection quest, you get a hundred or you get 600 select shards for an MR unit. So you could pop your Liviel up to 99. You could mm -hmm. get Lorenzo, Durando, somebody like that. So Earth, oh no, you have Moraga the whole time. So you don't even need another one once Galzak comes out. So you can constantly level Moraga. Like that selection quest is very, very doable from a very early part. So if you're an Earth player and you really want to tank, but you like, have never uh, taken that leap for the Warrior of the Crystal unit. That could be hard to get. Moraga is a good option for you. And uh, yeah, selection quests are really fun too. They're really fun. They're, they've always had a reputation for being something that you couldn't do until you'd like well, a super veteran difficult. account. Well, they were They're very least... difficult back in the day. Um, yes. But we've... I mean, the game... The good thing is the old match or the... It's the old quests sort of get power crept um, yes. by like 140s and EX. If you're lazy, yep. you can just go back and basically auto some of them. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's All fun. Right. They are. They're really fun. Okay, here we go. Now, we got Jeff versus Hiso here. Jeff going to that Valentine's Day Miranda, something we've been talking about a lot today. A lot of attack on that team, though. 3,400 attack with a magic unit in slot one. Makes me think... We're probably looking at a Wingstern, or we're looking at a Bart's, maybe both of those. In fact, um, Bart's, Wingstern, Miranda is a team I really like to play myself. For Hiso, well, hey, lose to Bradley. Let's just bring Bradley out. You know what beats Bradley? <laughs> maybe Bradley beats Bradley. So let's bring out Bradley. 3,100 attack on that team, 1,800 magic. So there is some magic backing that guy up. We'll see if it's a Queen Mashari. Maybe it's a uh, Livial. That'd be cool. Poison action out there, maybe. I don't know. We're just waiting for one of the players to push start so we can get this thing going. Um, I don't know if it is an issue on their end that we've been running into, but I do believe we have the all good from the judges yep. to get it rolling. So we're just waiting on one of them to push the button. They have pushed the button. Now, let's not DC. That's the goal. Don't DC. All right, it is Engelbert Bart's Miranda versus Moshery Balo Bradley. So Balo back again. They're swift and fortified coming out from Miranda. It's an agility and magic buff for her group, which is nice. But more importantly, it gives her that physical shield, giving her a little bit of survivability. That's a big deal for her. It will really help her out. Now, Bart, he's going to look for the AOE resist buff for himself and Engelbert. Very good. Notice he did not hit Miranda with this. If Miranda is still out of range of the enemy when it's her turn, she will self buff that for herself. There's hate up for Engelbert and elemental chain resist, which, you know, you want to talk about like more modern day kind of mechanics in the game. Elemental chain resist is a very modern mechanic and don't sleep on how good that is, especially against teams like Bradley teams that have a lot of like multi hit attacks. So there's Miranda. She gives herself that AOE resist and that re-raise. So we got AOE resist all over the team. Bart's gonna open up the damage with Blades of Legend, his limit break. So lots of different colorful swords right here. Bart's is gonna hit Balo with those 10,000 damage, but Balo is actually healthy enough that he survives that. That's impressive, honestly. Like that's an SR unit that just took over 10,000 damage and lived. I know it's like, yeah, but he took 10,000 damage, but he lived. 
That means he gets to take at least one more attack. It's going to be the Saintly Cross from Engelbert that only did four. What the heck? That did nothing. Somehow Bart's hit him for that much, and then Saintly Cross hit him for nothing, and then Miranda hits him for almost 10,000 again. He has re-raced, so he's back. This Balo, look, this is part of Balo's upgrade. Not only does he come back to life, he comes back to life, gets a massive steroid, is full health again, and ready to rock it. Calculated Rin from Bradley comes out. Miranda lives via her shield. She was so dead without a shield, so, but it said she lives. Three-step star strike. This is a three-hit attack from Bartz onto Queen Mashiri, who takes it no problem. And now the Revenge of Balo, Taunting Blade. He takes Miranda out, and this is Balo's full form right here after he's re-raised. Re now, Miranda will live via her, well, she comes back to life via re-raise, but that won't last long. Queen's Gambit from Mashiri is going to come out, and the power of Earth is on display. Here we go. I have to think this is probably Miranda out of the fight. Engelbert is hanging in there. Like, to be fair to Engelbert, he is taking a beating and still ticking. Blade Bash comes in. No stun, though. Engelbert gets a heal via the Blood Sword. Bradley, 21 AP left. Assault Blade on Engelbert. Down he goes, but Courage will proc. He's still up for one more action. Bart is up next. Okay, Bart steps aside. Blade Blitz onto the Balo, who's still alive. Man, this Balo is a tough tough boy Mashiri knocks Engelbert out of the fight with a swift stick to the face and now it's the hero of this match Balo's turn sapping sword comes in Balo's gonna look to heal himself a little bit he will Bradley out of AP will give himself haste and reaction block rate move towards the fight and Mashiri's gonna look to finish the things off right here disparage comes out Bartz goes down that's GG and guess what Bradley won fight two Bradley won fight one both players played Bradley and Different players played them in both fights. So it's one to one. That's what I'm trying to say. It's one one series. Bradley won. Bradley won. We'll go to game three. Maybe both players will play Bradley. Or. I was just going to say, you think we're going to see both of them at the same time? I hope. If I'm one of those players, I might whip Joom out. Go Joom. Mm. Lassie. You know, something. forgetting her 140, like you were mentioning at the beginning of the stream, we haven't seen her at all. And she uh -oh. is. I feel like she never dies. Oh. So. Joom or Wait. Ayaka? Uh, no. Glassy. Flag Glassy. Glassy, Glassy. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Flag Glassy. <laughs> no, yeah. She's super hard to kill. She's one of those units kind of like, she was Bradley back in the day. She was Bradley yeah. uh, before Bradley, for sure. Um, if you were to pull out, now, Lean is also out there. If, you, if somebody was going to go wind, which we have not seen much wind yet today, we've seen Ed in strike teams. Oh, that's, true. that's really all we've seen for wind. Um, Lena could be an option and that would be, Lena would be a fine option as well. But if you were going to go double hundred cost with your, um, with your wind, your SR units for wind look like Sosha and that doesn't look great. Now, if you go to R units, you got Mia. If you go in units, you got nothing. So maybe one of the reasons in a 240 unit cost limit scenario, you don't see wind is because wind lacks that SR Balo. Like, look what Balo just did. He won that fight. Like, look, let's be real. Like, Bradley did a lot of the damage. Balo took three hits to kill the first time, came all the way back to life. Like, then was doing 6,000 damage to the enemy. Like, he was insane. That smartphone, I mean, that's why, like, that you don't give smartphones to people back in the old days, right? Because then it, they, they learn the secrets. He got on there and saw an ad for, like, like some way to get buff. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like he looked up the future a little bit. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, you know, he ordered some protein powder and some vitamins, and he's, he's doing good now. Anyway. You know, it does get... Oh, did the Oh, yep, go ahead. I was what just going to say also part of my strategy here was um in my quick pick matches was I had both phones on my healers. Cuz it's important. Uh, they need to communicate with you. That is good. Communication is very important in a fight. Absolutely. All right, okay. loading into the new room here. Excellent. This is going to be this is round 3, so this, this is This is the to third be, game. Winner um, of this goes to the finals. In tennis terms, I don't know. Match point. Match point. Being a kid and playing um, like Mario Tennis for like the first time, not knowing anything about tennis, I was like 15, 30, what's going on here? I don't understand. Yeah. How did I just <laughs> score 45 points? What's happening here? Why am I in love with somebody? 
What does this mean? 45 love? What? How many points is that worth? Are we playing Scrabble? Yeah, it's weird. Okay. You know what? Look, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We are going to probably see a mirror matchup right here. I mm -hmm. imagine Hiso's also brought out the Balo. Jess brought out the Balo. Uh, Bradley's definitely on both these teams. Both rocking about 1,800-ish so what I want to what I want to point out real quick is the stats are exactly the same for you. So it is the same team then. Okay. Here we go. What? Which Bradley will win? Oh, oh. Now that's different. Jeff's team over here <laughs> with the Dialdo. Now, this is his double tank comp. Meanwhile, Hiso's just bringing out the, the Mashari again. I personally... I, man, I think I like... Okay, I like Dialdo better than Mashari. I just think... I think straight up 1v1, I'll take Dialdo over Mashari all day. I know they're not 1v1ing each other, but I think Dialdo brings a little bit more to the comp. Now, there's obviously more to talk about here, right? Like you have a Balo on both sides. That's a huge deal. Um, you have Keenblade. This is the first Keenblade activate we've seen today. How crazy is that? Here's Calculated Rin from Bradley. Okay. Decent damage, but not insane. Dialdo's going to follow that up with his limit break. Now, Void Crash from Dialdo. This is something that if you've been playing Dialdo recently, he loves to cast his limit break. It will give him a little bit of sustain through regenerate. And it does decent damage, gives him that unit attack resist. He's going to be really, really hard to kill. He's got a lot of AoE resist. He's got a lot of magic resist. He's got a lot of single target resist. Here comes a magic AoE limit break from Mashari. Let's see what kind of damage this does. And there you go. Not very much to Dialdo. Unfortunately for Bradley, he was caught up in that. And now he's going to take Calculated Rin. And Bradley for Jeff goes down. So even though Dialdo's out here doing Dialdo things, sometimes it doesn't matter if your King Bradley goes and stands next to him and ends up dead. Now, Kiso's Bradley does the ultimate Bradley thing and just pops CT up and gets to go two times out of three, and that's OP, and now it's just over, right? Like, Balo's gonna get his super proc right here. He's gonna pop his protein powder steroids and come back at full HP and juiced <laughs> up, but it's not gonna matter, I don't think, because he's still got another Balo on the other side. Pawning Blade comes out from the other Balo. He shrugs it off, okay. And look, guess what? Bradley's going to go for the third time in, four, in five turns. Assault Blade comes out, not even Super Steroid Balo can survive Bradley. And he so he so picks up the win. We'll move on to the finals. Yep. Bradley is a good unit. There's water being wet one more time. All right, good reference. Yeah, I remembered from an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> My memory's anyway, not so that bad. He so is the winner, so he will be moving on to the finals here. So we've got another semi-final match coming up very soon with, um, let's go. We got Serebu. Serebu and Shadow. Yep. Battle of the S's. Getting sleepy? Oh, yeah. You're oh, never yeah. not tired. I guess when that's you had, like, true. Yeah, I mean, I'm just always tired. But you know what? I'm excited. These are, I look forward to these nights, man. I really do. Yeah. Like this is, I, I, you know, I, I do these every week back in the day and then life got too busy and I had to kind of cancel them. And now this is what I do for this. And I, I mean, shoot, I love it. I love it. Happy to be here and I'm happy to be here with you, Justin. Oh. Even if we can't be, it'd be better if we were in studio with a live hmm. studio audience. But a there's no live chance. studio audience. Imagine that. A live studio audience be pretty cool i know that sometimes some games do it at like e3 or whatever mm -hmm. oh yeah okay well now we got shadow versus serbu coming up next um we might already have we got a code already for that thing uh do we let me see i had to update some stuff here thank you for serbu a veteran of the tournament scene one of the few players to play in more than one tournament we already talked about kiwi earlier so mm. will that will that veteran status help him overcome the playoff jitters well i don't know because it's an auto battle fight so your units probably don't have those jitters but hey there it is shadow it is. brings out the flag glassy okay now unfortunately for shadow is not running into 
an Earth team. It was a pretty safe bet, but Serebu, favorite character, Roth, 2-0 on stream with Roth, maybe that flag glassy should have been like secret ammunition for Hiso's Bradley in the grand finals, but you never know. Hey, pull it out now. If that's your best comp, if if Flag Glassy's your girl, this is a semifinals. What are you what are you waiting for? Bring out your bring out your big hitters. So happy to see her out here. She is one of my favorite units in the game. She's great. She's great. Okay, Serbu has readied up. We're got like, we're feel, go ahead. I was just gonna say I feel like I've never really given her a chance yet. I really like the wind element in general. But I, I, I yeah. just feel like I haven't given her a chance. You know, back before um, most DPS units had some form of shield removal, she was popping AoE resist buffs with shields. And it was just like, okay, she ran in there with Jube. You couldn't kill either of them. And she's triple hitting you with her spear. And, you know, not everybody's building pierce resistance. So you're out there just destroying people. And yeah. it was great. Now, like with shield destroying effects kind of more relevant. Yeah, yeah, that she that hurts her for sure. But she is very strong. She's got a lot of HP. She's hard to kill. She does a lot of damage and has decent range too. Like, does that sound like Bradley? Yeah, it does. <laughs> now, <laughs> luckily in a 1v1 versus Bradley, she has that element advantage, which is uh, also nice. Just that you have to go give the thumbs up. No, you don't. They started oh, without sorry. the thumbs You're up. Right. Oh, no. <laughs> they're they're sitting here. <laughs> they're they're it. finally there. Okay, I saw the thumbs up appear. Ooh, we got now, a Leela. Oh, nice. Oh, and okay, a like Dario. That. Look at that. Okay. So one way. Now, earlier, I was talking about how Wind does not have like a great SR unit or an R unit or something like that. So what they can do, though, is take advantage of a strong 70 cost unit like Halloween Little Leela, who was the original... Like, I might be a 70 cost unit, but it's more like 100. Yeah, you know, like, I mean, she could be evasion. She could do all the things back in the day. Oh, yeah, so here uh, she is. You, yeah, you remember evasion little Leela yeah, from back in the day? That. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. It was like evasion warrior of light little Leela teams. And it was, it was all sorts of nuts. We also get to see something else we haven't seen all day here, which is both players starting in the opposite corner. Somehow, not once today, have both players started on complete opposite sides of the map, despite how possible it is. Now, there's Bells coming out from Glassy, so she will not have AP problems in this fight. Here's Roth, 14,000 HP. She's going to give herself a little bit more buffs and start moving in. Leela's passing out Protect. One thing about little Leela is, you know, it's, it's sort of a weakness of her. Maybe this is where her 70 cost starts to show up a little bit. Is her buffs just feel old right like protect it's just protect it's, it's not also like impossible to get the one that you want you turn on yeah. protect then you go against a magic team you turn on shell then you go against a, an attack team turn on both and then she'll never ever ever leave yeah <laughs> she's never moving <laughs> exactly you know something else about Lilo that's hard to predict is like right now there's a unit in her dps range there's also two injured allies What's she going to do? Is she going to heal them or is she going to go hardcore DPS, Leela? Let's see. We're going to find out right now. They're over so, 50, so she, she'll DPS. Yeah. Jeff, she's going DPS. You're right. They were over 50. So she goes for Sephiroth and, you know, hardcore DPS, Leela does about a thousand damage. There's Draining Seal from Dario. He uh, gives himself a little bit of a heal there and Spirit and Hate Up. That is nice. That was a big buff for Dario. Then there's the Triple Cross, right? That's the signature move. For Glassy, unfortunately, Roth is, was having none of it. I feel like this win team was more of a, I'm counting on going into Earth, then I'm going to be able to take down top tier dark meta. Sephiroth is out here doing a lot of damage. Leela, I mean, maybe even once you get through Roth or knock all of Roth's hate off, you still got a Leela back there waiting for you. Now, here we go. Halloween little Leela gets a chance to heal, maybe. Let's see. She will, Does she it. do it? Nah, she's going for the damage, dude. She's going to bring in the deeps. Okay, Shiny Conviction comes through here. If she is healing, it's like Kiraga, and it's going to be too late, which will be unfortunate. Nope, it's Kira. Okay, so not Mathematician, Leela? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think you leave Kira on. I, I like the Instacast heals myself. Anyway, Sephiroth takes a little bit more damage, and then he kills two people because that's what Sephiroth does. Well, Dario's on the path to the grave. Just, you know, he's just, he's just RPing himself from the story. Uh, it is <laughs> Rob's turn next. <laughs> Witch Strike comes in, does some damage right there. 
It's okay, Dario. Just hang in there, man. It's almost over. Curata comes through. Man, he could... Anyway, Dario's back to about half HP. Sephiroth's turn. Hell's Gate comes out again. Dario's still hanging in there. Leela, dead. That's unfortunate. You often see Leela running Zombie Mask, Zombie TMR. That is like the... I, I think that's almost necessary for Leela. Wouldn't have mattered here because Glassy was dead, but... Servu picks up the win with the Dark Team. I think his Roth teams are currently still undefeated, right? Like, I don't think mm. yeah, he's, he's been dropped a well. match. Well, I don't know what happened before the... Uh, True. Before the live stream began, but either way, he made it here, so must have gone well. Yeah. Um, and you know what? I'll give Serbu props for saying Roth's my favorite unit, and he's run it in every match we've seen. He just brings it out. This is Roth. Deal with yeah. this. Deal with this. Now, does she have Sephiroth helping out? Yes. And was Leela present in that last match? That's what I yes. told you. She was she's about there. ready to hit her 50% power spike. <laughs> her, her, her half a slime unit power spike. Yes. She's a late game half powerhouse. She's just Ooh, too either slow way. to move any. Yeah. Yeah, she's pretty slow. I mean, I feel like you could take it. You really need to like. TMR buff that thing out. Balo's pretty slow too. Although he just got that nice buff. I don't know, man. <laughs> Balo's the man. He is tough. I, I'm a big Balo fan, if you couldn't tell. Um uh, just sort of uh thinking about Leela here. So back when I heard about uh Lucia, Halloween Lucia. Okay. I heard that she was gonna be wind. I was very excited for it. She ended up being. <laughs> huh. That would That'd have been, been crazy. two, yeah, two wind Halloween units. Both 70 cost. Yeah. That's why I was excited. I was like, ooh, ooh. I guess <laughs> Class they changed it. Or cost loaded, <laughs> here we go. Yeah, instead they gave Dark another 70 cost. Dark does not need any more cost limited. Like, can we just stop giving Dark? Like, uh, Dark has so many cost limited tools, it's crazy. And all they really need is Halloween Lucia. She's everything. So, man, oh man. What is, okay, so if you build your regular Leela all the way to 140, she has 47 base agility. Or you know what I mean? She walks into no gear, no TMRs, right. no uh, cars, 47. That's not fast. Yeah, evidently. If it, <laughs> you know what I mean, it's pretty slow. Okay, compare that to, let's compare that to uh, Sephiroth. So Sephiroth, Again, no gear or anything. You're looking at okay, 64. Okay, so about, what is that, 18 or 22? I don't know, remember exactly what it was. Yeah, I don't remember what Lula's was, but it's a lot more. 64, though, is not on that, like, top tier of speed. Like, there's units that are getting up near 70. So, Sephiroth, though, is fast. Now, let's look at Balo. Again, all this, I like to just find random stuff to talk about in between matches. Just to keep, yeah, you don't want dead air time, right? That's not good. So, Balo, who did just get, he has 10% agility in his master ability, but like that's still whatever. Okay, Balo, are you slower or faster than Leela? Oh my gosh. Hmm. 37. That's low. That's very low. That's, uh, that's, yes. <laughs> One might say that's not fast. And one also might say that Bradley's a good unit. Anyway, Shadow comes back with a different team this time. Brings out the Perrine, 3169 on the attack. Is it Perrine Edward again? Probably. That's been a very popular team. There's it's so a meta team. much overlap with those vision cards in those. I feel like they yes. can, they're both on like three or four vision cards. They're on, but they're both on Perrine's card. They're both on Ed's card. I'm pretty sure they're both yep. on the other FMA card that came Ooh, I don't know about that other one, but I know you're right about like that. Like, like we we're talking about, it was those cards that just tied it all together. Yeah, you, yes, you, you need the good unit, right? Like, right. if the units are bad, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, if uh, anyway, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hate on two units and talk about them being on the card and how bad it is. Anyway, Air, dude, Justin, it's your girl. It's Aerith coming oh. out in this fight. It's Kareen Aerith Uni. Forget the strike team. Forget the strike meta. We are just going to go Sephiroth versus Aerith. 
um a one-sided match is old as time she doesn't even see it coming and then next thing you know Sephiroth's right there and it slides out for Aaron. now uni's gonna try and do a little work first though actually uni that's not a bad strategy because Sephiroth cannot climb over that hill so he's gonna have to walk all the way around and uni's gonna be raining arrows on him the whole time now leela He's going to cast Zombie Transform. I think Lila's going will... to see some tank play this game. Oh, I do too. Now, available. This will help Sephiroth a lot. That AP Restore with that shield's going to tank up a lot of Uni's damage. Aerith and Perrine are going to continue to stand back here next to each other and uh, wait for a while until the fight kicks off. Aerith is, Aerith is in one of those spots where if you're an Aerith player, you're like, I wonder if she leaves. Like, she might stand here the whole game. Now, there you go. There's defense up with haste. I really like that upgrade to haste, by the way, that it gives defense up as well. Uni continuing to do a little bit of damage is about to find herself in a 1v1 against Roth. She does not win that 1v1. Shadow Dance, very, very good skill right there. Into a Quicken. So we're going to see some Quicken shenanigans here. Here's Perrine. Is she in range yet? Nope. She gets Quickened into nothing. That's unlucky. Just nobody was in range yet. Now, Hell's Gate from Sephiroth. 56, 73 damage to Perrine. She has herself heal. Will it proc there? No, not quite. Roth's going to move forward. Double destruction. Uni can take a hit or two. So Uni hanging in there. But in this 2v2, you got Sephiroth Roth versus Uni and Perrine. And then Leela is coming someday, eventually. No, Justin says no, she's not. You know who's really not showing up for this fight? That's probably Aaron. Vortex Kit comes out. It's decent damage onto both. This water team just lacks a punch. Now, Aerith, okay, yeah, here it is. She's, she's going to, she gave herself haste. So she will now more quickly not leave that spot. Okay, look, I got to say, look, like, I think it's a really cool thing to bring Aerith out here. And I don't even hate the idea, honestly. But the problem is, Aerith standing back there, if that corner is not the corner where this fight happens, she will literally never leave. She just won't leave. And that's what you're seeing. She could have gone out and healed Perrine right there. Maybe Perrine's still alive. Maybe the fight's a little bit different at that point. I don't know. But she didn't. Uni, well, it's evasion Uni, though. She's dodging the limit break right there from Roth. Uni might try to 1v3 this thing. Uh, auto attack, 546 damage. If she is going to 1v3, she's got a long way ahead of her. Aerith moves. That's different. Now, Sephiroth, look. Oh, oh that's reflex? her second okay. reflex. That's her second, second reflex. reflex. She has two reflexes and a dodge. So this uni is the tank for the water team. It's evasion tanking. Evasion tanking is a very scary thing. Oh. Aerith oh, runs forward. Aerith might that's third reflex. Right? She reflexes? Yes, yeah, she did. Okay, Uni's unkillable. She's reflexing everything. Now, Leela does take a hit, and it's a decent hit. Uni actually hits her pretty hard. Can Aerith combo that for a kill? Uh, no. Aerith is magic damage, and that's a Leela. What's Aerith? Ah, Aerith's not healing. She's not killing anybody. She's going to heal Uni a little bit. Sephiroth comes in with Spirit Breaker, and Uni didn't need that heal because Uni was one shot by Sephiroth, no matter what. She goes down. Here comes Silencing Spell, and Silence doesn't. Does, oh, that's really unfortunate. Aerith had a chance. She wasn't going to do anything anyway. You're right. She wasn't going to do anything anyway. <laughs> she was silenced okay. out, of the, out of the gate. Aerith, hit right, him with I'm your I'm being stick. a little hard on Aerith. Well, oh. here we go. Telerik Fury, Ooh. three hits from Sephiroth will take Aerith down. To be fair, it's I'll two it more to than you. it took in the original game. Serebu picks up it. the win. What? What am I going to say? Aerith. Sephiroth, did nothing. You've referenced it every other match, and then it happens. Oh, I already of referenced it in this one. I started with it, but it actually happened. It did. You're right. I ended <laughs> with it. I said it. I said three hits was two more than it took in the original game. Oh, okay. I mean, that's a Maybe reference I was to the. Uh, off. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. You were just you were looking for a different reference. Anyway, GG Serbu, good win, Roth. Um, I four think and Serbu, zero on stream. Yeah, I think Serbu did really well. I think. I just, I don't know what, Shadow had a really strong um, other match, so I don't, I, I'm a little confused by the air, and even the win team, I don't know, I don't know, it was just a little. Yeah, I think the win team was a, was a, was a hope, like, hey, I just saw Bradley <laughs> beat Bradley, I'm not going to yeah. go lose to Bradley, and you didn't lose to Bradley, you lost Sephiroth and Roth. 
And so then the second one, the second one might have just been like, like maybe what Shadow said is I don't have anything that can beat that team. Mm -hmm. So, or I don't have anything prepped that can beat that team. So I'm going to play stuff I like. I like Aerith. I'm on Square Enix's live stream right now. Let me give my girl a chance. And you and I, Justin, have been sitting here talking a lot about her as a unit, about healers. And he yep. just said, you know what? I feel motivated. I'm going to give her a chance to shine. But I would have um, liked to have seen an Ayaka in there, too. But imagine if we had Ayaka instead of Yuni. Who would have had a different one finals hit. going on? <laughs> No, Uni was the MVP for that water team. Uni was out. Uni a, a triple yeah, reflex. Uni didn't and, do anything except stand there and dodge. She did the most. He did the most damage on anybody on that team. It wasn't <laughs> much, but it was a lot more than uh, Aerith did. Yeah, but that Perrine still would have been alive. That's all I'm saying. No. Yes. No. You could yes. double. You could triple support. Imagine a nice what. immobilize. Game over. Real question. On Leela? Real question. Let's say <laughs> that Shadow hacked the game and was able to go Perrine, Aerith, Ayaka, and a third healer. A four versus three. Okay. Does that four person team beat that dark team? It has to be a healer. Yeah, easily. No way. Yeah. Nope. Because once Perrine dies, it's over. I don't know. You get Yuna in there. Space chicken? <laughs> Sp Seth Frost going to cut that space chicken up and take him to Kentucky and fry him up and put him in a bucket. and It's going to be KFC for days. Okay. Okay, but what Props healer good. What healer would actually make a big a big difference? Um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to run through all the healers in my brain here. but I don't think it exists. Like, mm. if you go into the water element, nope. Nah, there's not one. Ildira doesn't really count. Although, I would still say you put Ildira in there, it wouldn't matter. It's still not changing anything. Ildira. Oh. Uh, I mean, is she a healer? To me, she's... She heals. To me, she's, um... Water uh, slash chaining stuff. That's how I see it. <laughs> Wait, Lena, I'd have given you, I'd have given you the the Lena Ayaka plus Aerith Perrine combo. Wouldn't have mattered. Well, I didn't want to pick, I didn't want to say her because she kind of like Ayaka. She's been okay. Let's All see. Right. We're gonna be jumping actually into the finals here in just one moment. How about Velis? That's about the best healer out there. No, uh, it wouldn't matter. Oh, I forgot. You know, I actually always forget about him. Yeah, he's good. We jump on in here. Okay, good. They're finally they're they're ending my uh, looking at every healer in the game misery because I'm not a I'm not a huge <laughs> lover of the healers. So, ugh, yeah, Heike probably could have given her four. A five person team with four healers and Perrine. Sephiroth just going just drop bombs. Now, yeah, all the vision card buffs would have helped. Anyway, as soon as we're into the match, I'll start doing that. There we go. Okay, look, this is not a surprise at all. Hiso goes with the Bradley. That is, look, I mean, Hiso knows what got him here. And it was this Bradley comp. This Bradley's a monster. Surabu knows what got him here. It was the Roth Sephiroth comp. They're both going to bring it out. This will be a very telling fight. Because for Surabu, we've seen nothing else. And for Hiso, we haven't really seen anything else work. So, one of them will have their best thing dethroned. I guess Hiso has run a dark team that picked up one win. But really, if we're being real, he got here on the back of King Bradley. So, let's see it. Let's see it. Balos here as well. Queen Mashiri. This is Hiso's special Earth team. And then it is the exact same team we've been seeing from Cerebu. 
First mover in the game is going to be Serebu. I believe this will be the Sephiroth going first. He's going to pop momentum, give himself that reaction block rate and haste, moves towards the middle of the map, towards that Balo, drawn a little aggro in the beginning. Poise comes out from Bradley. That's his physical damage buff and his courage. Roth going to go ahead and give herself a little bit more survivability. Spirit of Horde comes out from Ashuri. And there's the Undying Wall from Roth. Now, those resists won't really work well against her. But still, she's harder to kill than she was before. Uh, there's the buff from Balo. He's going to eat a silencing spell. He's silenced, but that won't matter to him a lot. It's interesting that Leela is the first one to do damage in this fight. That's the first time we've seen that. Octoslash comes out from Serebu onto the Balo. It's going to do 74.59. It does remove Courage and Re-Raise. But remember, Balo's a special case. Let's see if he still comes back right here. Uh, Roth's going to knock him. Oh, not quite knock him down. He's going to live. And then she takes the counterattack for Bradley. Mashiri not in range yet. Going to give herself the shield with agility up. And it's Sephiroth's turn again. 39 AP. Everybody's grouped. This is probably a ooh, preemptive counterattack. Gate. There's huge damage across the whole team. Down goes Balo. So the removal of the re-raise is a big deal there. Comes into play early, but everybody's grouped up for Bradley into Queen Mashery. Queen's Gambit comes out. This could be a triple kill. Let's see. Nope. The only one who lived was Leela. Roth does have re-raise, so she comes back to life, gets her AoE resist up. But do Roth and Leela have the damage to finish off Mashery and Bradley? Well, they could kill Mashiri. She goes down, but she has re-raised. Now, does Leela have any sort of big damaging spell at her kit? She's going to go a silencing spell. She does silence Mashiri. That'll be a big help. How much AP does Bradley have left? 21. It's enough to kill Leela, but not enough to do a big AoE attack and also take out Roth. It's Roth's turn. Mashiri silenced, so she can't cast spells. Does Roth have a big AoE attack right here? Does Roth have something in the bank to kill them both? Double destruction comes out. And Serbu's unit, does she do it? No, CT up pop for Bradley. His courage goes up. So Bradley's going to get another turn. But guess what? 9 AP. He can't do a spell. He's going to give himself haste. He's going to advance forward. Can Roth get him? Does she have the range? She steps up. She's going to begin channeling a spell. Channeling a spell is not what you want to do. It needed to be instant. The channeling time gets her. And Bradley sneaks around the side. And the Clash of Titans, the two teams that have looked unbeatable, it is a one HP difference. Bradley, with one HP after his courage pop, kills Rop, who was about to kill him with her channeling spell. It doesn't get much closer than that. It doesn't get much closer to that. GG. Kiso 1, Serebu 0. Best of 5, though. Gotta win 3 to advance this time. Let's kick it hmm. to the analyst desk to break down that fight. Yeah, that was a... Uh, things got really hot and heavy there right at the end. That silence on Mashiri almost there yes if, i mean we just had this exact same conversation with almost the same people but that bradley a few reincarnations less would have died from uh, yeah oh yeah now and like i i wonder there too does okay so i'm gonna pull up roth's kit a little bit right here because i she went with a channeled spell now i am building roth myself but slowly so i have not got her finished yet I wonder, does she have something she could have done right there without a cast time that would have killed him? Double Destruction has no cast time. Had she already used that three times? I don't know. She's used it at least once or twice. If she had that still in the bag, that ends the fight in a victory for her. But she was going with something like Release from Life or something else. Witch Strike has no cast time, but maybe she wasn't in range for that. She has uh, all scholar things have a little bit of cast time. She has Spellblade. She probably wouldn't run Spellblade. Her limit break. Man, it, that's where right there, that's where auto PvP can rise up and bite you. Because there was definitely moves in her kit that killed Bradley right there without a cast time. I think he was in range mm -hmm. for all of them. But the AI yeah. went with a channeling spell. And then Bradley had just enough move, get yeah. around to the side, lunge in, GG. Yeah, if this was manual, right? Like that Raph would have just booked it the other direction. Yeah. Ah, oh yeah. About <laughs> it. Yeah. Bye bye. So Yeah, you um, start channeling the spell and you leave. Because you could channel that spell from next state over. Yeah, we had there was like a really random uh 
lag spike that happened in the middle of that. Very odd. Um, if anything is desynced, I apologize. Oh, like on your end? Did the hurricane arrive? Oh, maybe. Might be. Might, maybe we had like a weird power fluctuate. I don't. I doubt it. Um, but there was like a very split second where it went. Huh, I, it, I did not see that on my end. At least I don't think I did. <laughs> yeah. Everything looks normal, so. Okay. Uh, anyway, we're jumping into the second match here. I'll try to work on it. Well, guess what? We're going to do it again. Here we go. He's so, he's so in his Bradley. Sir Boo in his Roth. Hey, it was so close that time. You know what? Why not? Why not? Now, I don't know. I did not memorize attacking magic values, but I'm pretty sure he's so, he's so is running the same team. Sir Abu, there's more magic this time maybe pull it out something a little bit different if nothing else we'll go with initial placement differently maybe you can pull that sephiroth forward and expose him to, or i'm sorry maybe you could pull that bradley forward and expose him to some damage before he can get you know, fully online that could be a play i don't know we will see both players are readied up and they will jump into this match in a moment Dang, I never can do it, man. I always try to time it just perfectly for that, like, and let's start, and it never yeah. works out. That's okay. They're just trolling me at this point. They're watching the stream. They're listening. Or maybe they are listening, but there's, like, a little bit of a delay, and so they're trying to hook me up, but... Uh... I don't think I thumbs up. Oh, Justin got me again. No <laughs> thumbs up. It's just a, it's a collaborative effort to make it not... Uh, to make my timing I'm up. I'm sorry. It's okay. I forgive you. Uh, but we, we will actually be having an interview with both of them. Right. Um, here very very soon um, after the conclusion of the finals here. We can get thoughts from both of them. I've got a request from you, RNJ, if we could do this very quickly. Yeah. Would you mind turning your camera off and then back on very quickly? My camera off and back on? Yes. yes. Like in... um, Yeah, I can do that. All right. I will do it right now. Well, you could have just done it on Zoom, but it's... Like, Oh, I turned yeah. it physically off and back on. <laughs> so something did happen, then if that's messed up, but okay. Did you turn it back on? It We're is in the middle it is, of the match. It is at um it's turning back on right now. It's back on. Will impede me. To arms. Are we good? Darkness anyway, okay, we'll see. People just need Sorry, to hear me, that. not see me. Wrath moves forward, double destruction comes out onto the Bradley. They did lure the Bradley into range very early this time. So that is different. Kiso's rocking the Balo Mashery Bradley over here. Uh, Leela gonna go zombie transformation. So she'll be a little bit harder to kill. Almost 13 and a half thousand HP on her. 69 AP left on Bradley. There's a reflex. There's something different that did not happen the first fight. Sephiroth has reflex to move and now will engage the enemy with full health with his Octo Slash. So limit break coming in. What kind of damage will we get? Big damage. Courage removes across the board. But Bradley does the ultimate Bradley thing and pops his CT up. Roth will still get to go before him, but Roth needs to do an instant cast thing right here. Oh, Roth gets preemptively countered. Double destruction. That is an instant cast thing. What does this look like when it's done? It looks like Bradley and Mashery on the ground. And yep, all of a sudden, it's Balo versus three. Balo's going to eat the 5,200 damage from Sephiroth's little, like, I feel like Sephiroth, like, snaps his fingers right there. That was over in a heartbeat, man. That thing was quick. So Sephiroth takes down Balo to end that fight and quickly even sing up at a game apiece. One to one. We are now essentially in a best of three. Nice. Yes, that was a very quick match. Um, Zerubu, way to go. We're at one one. So we'll see uh, what's going on here. <laughs> This, it, it's best of three, right? So not best of, or- No, like, it's a best of sorry. five, but- Three we, wins, best of five, yes. But at one to one, you're essentially now walking. You you basically just shorten the series now. Oh, that's true, you know? right. Best of three. <laughs> oh, was that double speed again, by the way? I think so. Okay, well, it's fine. I believe so. It, yeah, I, I- No, it's not fine. Those are the rules. Okay, follow the rules. Anyway. I guess if there's like one rule you're not going to follow, that one at least has zero impact on the outcome of the match. <laughs> you know, like at least that one doesn't harm anything. It's like, okay, oh. do me a favor. Okay. Turn your camera off now, on Zoom. On Zoom. Just click camera off and turn it back on. I did that. 
just now. Okay. We'll see. Chat, let me know. Um, w there was also... It was, um... We kind of said this on stream, but since we were sitting here waiting for a second. So yeah, whatever that, whatever that like lag spike was or whatever, must have like jacked up the, um, cause like I'm looking at myself in the zoom call and yeah. I'm looking at your screen, right? Cause that's what I like watch <laughs> and that looks fine to me. Right. But I, I don't have a, I have the chats open, but I don't have an actual stream open. I'll go look at one. Let me see what kind of pose I'm holding here. This will be <laughs> worth looking at. The camera is still delayed. That's very weird. I don't. Yeah. So whatever. Somebody possessed the computer. Whatever that little. Uh, whatever that. Do you want me to just turn my camera off if it's bothering people that my mouth is delayed? No, 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 no. Okay. Um, maybe you could leave and then rejoin. That might work. The Zoom? Yeah. Okay. Do it very quickly. I will. Very quickly. Anyway, here's the bracket, as you guys can see. We got Hiso Hiso versus Surabu. 1-1 one, one each, so we'll be diving on into this very quickly. Getting two times speed turned on. Hopefully. He's joining back. Okay, I'm back. Hi. Hello. Thank you. Let me pin you here. All right, stream. Am I still doing a Bruce Lee impression? I don't know what that means, <laughs> by the way. But I think it's because like in a lot of dubs or something like that. Oh, <laughs> yes. You know all that right. Is. I mean, you it's guys are very... lucky, okay? You guys don't know, but I'm actually speaking a different language the whole time, and then it's being live dubbed. That is impressive. Yeah, Kung Fu Theater. This is a... Yes. Okay. We saved this special bit for the finals. I'm going to turn mine on. I want to listen to this. Okay. I'm going to. Wait, what are you turning oh, on? Oh, I'm trying to see if oh, I can. Audio? Yeah, okay. I was trying to see if I could hear myself on stream, but I have it set up so that I can't. Don't want that feedback loop, but. We're actually jumping on into the. Oh, uh, good. Match here. So. Your camera will be small down. Okay. Or maybe, maybe you could just delay what you're maybe you could do like a ventriloquist just delay what you're saying with your lips Ooh. you know what i'm trying to say like imagine if that? that's like imagine having the skill to to independently control the sound you were making and your mouth movement i've seen a few videos on instagram so i know it's possible wow they like walk up to people they're like hey how's it going and the guy's like what <laughs> yeah i mean i could now, see, now I'm just doing it on purpose. I'm just trolling. Okay, I'm going to not do that. I can't do it. I was thinking about if I could. It's not even going to happen. But I digress. That was a good attempt. It Thank was, you. yo. Okay. I don't know what that little lag spike was, but I definitely believe you that it was real now. Yeah, I don't know. It just went. And then Zoom popped up and said, performance issues. Huh. I don't know. Everything stream looks good. Didn't drop any frames. Zoom. Okay. Know. Come on in. Zoom. Come on in. Zoom. Yeah. All right. Now, guess what? Iso's running Bradley. Surabu's good. I think we're uh, we ran into an issue here. Did we? Okay. I'm sorry. I have, uh, let's see. <laughs> the issue was probably that um, who? Uh, ooh. Okay. A real issue this time. Okay. And the, the, I'll say the issue is probably that like one of the players put it on 1.5 times speed and they're like, oh no, can't do that. We got to go double speed. Oh wait. Yeah. Anyway. Perhaps. Well, what what new thing? Um, what new thing can we talk about now? I feel like we've exhausted a lot of uh, topics already tonight, but there is no code word. I apologize. Um. Uh, and yes, perhaps restarting Zoom would help, but. I don't want to do that because you do a lot not... of stuff hanging on it. <laughs> no, 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 no. So. Justin cannot restart Zoom because if Justin restarts Zoom, this whole this thing is going, it's going to explode. Yes. Could have a cascading effect. I... Yes, I I am the guest into the stream, so therefore 
It's, I'm just one thing in and out. He's hosting the whole dang thing. We're hosting it together. Um, but I am running it from that's what I meant. Yeah, up here. So there we go. Um, I've got a command center here of screens and laptops and tablets. So yeah, we'll be hopefully jumping into the next match very soon. How many monitors do you run, Justin? On like your PC, um, how many monitors on the PC? So on my real PC, um, I have my normal PC and then I have an ultra wide and one, so just two monitors. Okay, so the ultra wide, um, is it one of those ones that's like, like curved a little bit, like it's got the curve yes. going? Do you like yeah. that? Is it nice? Oh, I love it. Okay. It's not a super ultra wide, so it's not like two monitors stuck together. It's just a little bit wider. Uh huh. But I would say it's, I cannot use my computer without it. Really? Man. I, yes. I like looked at those the <laughs> other day and I was just like weirded out by it. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if I trust that ultra it's wide. It's a little interesting. It's a little interesting at first, um, but you get used to it and then you love it. Like okay. it's especially good for like top down games if you're down game yeah you get extra vision dude um, or in just in general some other games work pretty well or whatever you just get a lot more real estate it's nice mm -hmm. um but from this in my office um i have a laptop here that um i have my laptop screen and then i have another monitor and then my camera and another laptop tablet so many screens but different devices yes okay. Is this very early or late where you live? It's 8 p.m., so neither. Yeah, 8 p.m. is a good time. So, yeah, 10. it's 10 p.m. here, 8 p.m. on the West Coast, 11 p.m. on the East Coast, 10 p.m. in the Central Coast. We don't have a coast. We have... No, we don't. You go straight down, I suppose, get to the Gulf. But, yeah, not a coast. 9 or... p.m. Mountain oh, time. See. What time is it in Hawaii? I don't know if they time changed. They're, I know they're generally three hours behind, so okay. maybe it's like five o'clock over there. They might have they might have evolved beyond daylight savings time, the thing that we all <laughs> should just do. So where technically a state is not allowed to be in daylight savings time permanently, they can only opt out of it. Yeah, either way. I mean, just don't change. Like, no, not either way. Well, no, Daylight I'm just saying, I'm just saying I don't care. Like, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I just don't. All I know is I really don't like when I just one night during the year, they're like, hey, no, you don't sleep as long as night. Hmm, that's true. I heard there's a lot more, like, heart attacks. And... Probably. Um. So, yeah, just waiting to get the room set up. I apologize, everybody. Just a few more moments here, hopefully. But yes, um, this is a worldwide championship. Next stream that we're going to be doing is going to be hosted in the European region. Mm -hmm. So it'll be bright and early here in the U.S. Yep. I don't know what time it'll be. Probably late at night over in the Asian time zones. Yeah, that makes sense. And that will be on September the 16th. September 16th. So about one month from now. Yeah. That will be a manual tournament, I believe. Uh-huh. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what we have going on then. The signups are going to be starting today for the Ovis Cup. So prepare for that and sign up. I would like to see everybody signing up for that. As these tournaments go on, the people signing up tend to dip a little bit, you know. Maybe due to time zones, that sort of stuff. People that are in Europe, sign up for your Ovis Cup. Uh, yeah, manual. But you don't have to be in Europe to sign up for that. Right. Yes. Sorry. And I feel like manual, you have a better chance of making it too. Like I think manual has fewer signups true. in general. So it is a bit of a like, RNG to get in. So, yeah. Even if you don't know, even if you don't know how to do manual PvP, show up anyway. Yeah. You get a t-shirt. You get a title. You might Maybe match against other people who aren't that. great at manual and beat them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do is there anybody that you know personally justin that you would like to see in the manual tournament like you just know them they're a great manual player 
and you're like encouraging them to join uh not, i don't i feel like i don't know a, a lot of the manual players too well plus i think a lot of them have already been in ah okay um I wish Raindell would apply because he he was my sensei way back in the day. We did a live stream. I remember that entering the yes. on the canyon map. Uh huh. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah, it was. I was using Lara Croft. I, I remember talking to him before the stream started, and he's like, "I know all the units, kits, and everything like that." And I was like, "Okay." I was like, "I have Lara," and he's like, Ooh, "I actually don't know Lara." <laughs> He's like, so I was like, I can go over a kit real quick. And he's like, don't worry about it. It's good. I got it under control. Okay. So we did it live. Yeah, he he made a lot of content for the game back in the day. He still puts out an occasional video. You know, just about like his uh, class matches or something like that. He was a big class match fan. I'm, I'm sure he probably still is a big class match fan. Uh, let's get a, you know who we should get to join next time? Your your guildy um Dejan TP. Get him in there. Get Dejan in. The manual? Yeah. We'll have Dejan manual it up. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I know he's in here. So Dejan, start lifting weights. Yes. That's what he told me back in the day before I joined the guild. He was like, You've been lifting weights? Are you ready to join? I was like, okay. <laughs> you look sure. Alright, so uh we have a little bit of an update here. Um, uh, Surubu is going to be getting one extra point due to a violation of the rules a little bit. Iso side. So we are going to be giving one match point to Surubu. So this score is going to be one Hiso to Surubu. Um, so this next match could potentially be match point for Surubu if he does come out victorious. Or Hiso could come back and tie it up. So technically, we've done three matches already. Two points for Surubu, one point for Hiso, and we'll be going into the fourth match here very soon. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, I know it's like at the beginning of the streams, it might feel like we spend a little bit of time going over the rules. Like, it's a, it might seem like a lot of slides. It might seem like, hey, why are they talking about all this again? But we talk about it before every single tournament because when you get into a room and this is this is a rule that like i'll take credit for this i cooked this rule up years ago is it was one of the only ways to ensure you're not sniping your opponent's team and like i don't i'm not accusing anybody of doing anything here i'm just saying like once you're in the room with the opponent you can tell like you get to see what their first unit is you can see their attack and magic values and it's very easy to then go into like make a small tweak change a vision card change an esper something like that, that can give you an advantage. Now, it could simply just be, and it probably, like a benefit of the doubt, right? A big benefit of the doubt guy. I'm going to assume that like, Hiso was probably just didn't have the right thing equipped or didn't have the right vision card on. So it just swapped it real quick. But hey, once you're in the room, that's why we make the rules. So it was just decided to give a point to Cerebu. And um, there we go, Indeed. two to one. Moving on very quickly here, so um, we will be g jumping into match four very soon, actually. I thought it was ready, but not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I jumped the gun, I'm sorry. All right, yeah, we're, we're trying to track everything in chats, too, over here. So, that's why you have not got... I'm sorry, chat, you have not gotten a super interesting story about something semi-related to War of the Visions during this. But we are, we're, yep. we're trying to keep our eyes on the prize. Will they? Yes, they will. I would say, will they run the exact same teams again? Yes. Yes, they will. So, Hiso bringing out the Earth team, Serbu bringing out the Dark team, Serbu doing a little initial placement here. How important, one thing we might figure out, how important was the reflex from Sephiroth last time? I don't know that it made a huge difference. Like, I feel like when that last match ended, Sephiroth was not close to dead, but he did still reflex the first opportunity he had to take damage, which was a RNG tip in his favor. So if you're Hiso, you could think, hey, that's probably not going to happen again. If you're Surabu, you're like, yes, it is. It's going to happen three times, and I'm going to take home the Wazette Cup Championship with, on the back of some uh, 
reflex shenanigans. Now, because this is auto, both of these players have already qualified for the grand finals, correct? I believe that is right. So, yes. here we go. Both players will have a chance to uh, play each other again or other players again no matter what. Here comes Veil of Well for Cerebro. So get that AP restore, get that shield online. My personal favorite Sephiroth buff right there. Queen Mashuri doing the thing that's got her killed a few times uh, today where she begins by stepping forward, getting her buff online. But initial placement is very, very different in this fight. This time Sephiroth and Roth are way off to the left. And over by themselves is who? Over by themselves is Leela. So Leela's, Leela might get a very early chance to do some tanking, I guess is what I'm saying. Now, she's going to pop... That's what I said last time. <laughs> That's right, you did. That's right. Now, she does pop zombie transform. So if she does get too early of a chance, she will revive one time unless that gets removed. Octo Slash going to come out for Sephiroth here. The limit break. He's going to drop a big sword bomb and then look away from explosions like cool people do. Courage and re-raise off of Balo. And he's sitting at about 55-60% HP. Calculated rend onto the Leela. She's also sitting about right there. Both of the SR tanks starting off with a good show, taking a lot of damage from the enemy and living to tell about it. Okay, it's Mashiri's turn. Now, Leela is very good against magic, but she still took 4,000 damage right there from the Mashiri into the calculated rin from Bradley. And we're gonna get to see that re-race come through immediately for Leela. So good for her for having it, but the Earth team is grouped. Sephiroth is going to get a chance to do some AoE damage. His specialty right here. Let's see what he goes for. He's got Balo still to worry about. He's going to step up, go Hell's Gate. Mashiri and Balo will be the targets. Balo's HP bar reaches zero. Balo goes down into the double destruction from Roth. Queen Mashiri will also go down. Does she still have re-raise? Yes, she does. She will come back. So, Leela, Roth, Sephiroth still alive, but... Bradley, crucially, sitting there with a whole lot of HP left and a whole lot of anger. 21 AP. What's he got? Assault Blade for the Roth. It almost kills her. She does live. That's important. Mashari gets to go again. What is this CT for Mashari, though? She's got speed on her side. She takes down Roth, who has re -raise. So all the re at this point, I believe, are popped. It's Sephiroth's turn. He's got two targets. They're next to each other. He specializes in this sort of thing. Hell's Gate comes out. 6,800 on Mashiri. She goes down. Bradley goes down to about 5-10%. But guess what? CT up. Because that's what Bradley does. It's not quite enough, though, to give him his third turn before Roth goes. But, oh, we've seen this movie before. Roth <laughs> is channeling a spell right in front of Bradley. But this time, Bradley has no AP. He will be released from life. By Roth, that is a win. Surabu picks it up. GG, that means it's a 3-1 victory for Surabu in what was all close matches, honestly. Well, every one of them but the forfeit yeah. was very, very close. So, hey, good showing right there. Two, I believe, Justin, you and I both said we're probably going to see Sephiroth. We're probably going to see Bradley. We not only saw them, they both showed up in a huge way today and i gotta give serbu props for sticking with his girl Roth. she didn't look great early like i thought she was on some weaker looking dark teams but he knows what to do he knew how to play her she got in there did her thing and uh that is the second place winner from the very first tournament you and i ever did together he is now yep. the, our little boys all grown up he's first place winner now <laughs> so there we go <laughs> Yes, indeed. Congratulations, Rebu. Very good showing. Very strong. Uh, ran the whole, basically the whole team during the during the tournament, which is, uh, I think that really goes into the um, sort of manipulation that you can do within the game as far as changing abilities, placement, and everything else. It's all very important. Rebu really showed that it is important enough to win tournaments. Oh yeah, it definitely was. Um, the Leela was also good. She tanked just enough, and she did the thing you were kind of talking about, where she was just, like, back there. Like, yeah. the reason she wasn't grouped is because she'd only taken one turn. And during that turn, yeah. she just put re-raise on. She's like, oh, I'm going to die. But I'm going to come back once. <laughs> and she did. And every time um, they come back, that's one more time you got to attack them. And if they're far away from your team, that's one more attack that does not get pulled into the squad. Yep. Um, so we'll be actually having an interview with both of them here very soon. So stick around for that. We can get some thoughts into their process, see what is going on in their mind. 
Yes. Both of these players honestly have very good showings. Oh, yeah. And both, like we said, both qualified for the grand finals. Like, I think, yes, yes winning would be great. You get the trophy, you get the title. Mm -hmm. But uh, the biggest prize, that 100,000 Viziewer grand prize, that's uh, floating out there somewhere in December, I believe. November. Yeah, so question here in chat really okay quickly. sure um they asked if he took second place in the previous tournament he took second place in a tournament that wasn't part of the right. championship we were doing like a beta test at the beginning of the year it was called like the new year's pvp tournament he took second place in that since that was outside of the championship and there was like a beta test he qualified to enter that's correct um, and that's why like kiwi sings was also in that tournament and won that tournament but then showed up at, like the very i think the very next tournament we had was the european uh, auto tournament and i believe kiwi was in that mm -hmm. and i don't I remember what so. I, I don't think he I, he did not win that one he might have got set i don't remember what kiwi got in that but yeah yeah yep no problem uh, but yeah that. so we'll be doing an interview here very soon just getting it all set up checking microphones you know how it goes we've done oh it yeah before was he in the asia tournament i mean he's in that time zone yeah, if, it would have made more sense for him to be in the Asian tournament because uh, he wait no he's not Australian in New Zealand. He's in New Zealand. New I Zealand. Mean, it's, yeah, it's that same time zone. <laughs> yep. Um, who are we starting with? Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, he so first that would make sense. <laughs> Second place finisher. Um, it sounds like they're ready. So let's dive on into the okay. Discord here. So remember to mute yourself on Zoom if you could, please. Wait, you don't want my delayed voice plus an echo? It'll be interesting to see if that actually happens. Yeah, let's let's go. <laughs> Boys in Discord. Hmm. So we're going to be interviewing Hiso here. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Um, yeah, looks like oh, your he's... microphone is working. Hiso, hello. We meet again. <laughs> good to see you again. <laughs> hey, good showing today. That uh, way to ride the Bradley train, right? Yeah. Apologies for the disconnect. We have a hurricane in Southern California. And uh, I lost Wi-Fi. So I wasn't getting the text messages that you guys were sending. Um, and I, I wasn't able to post my, um, the other comp to, uh, the judge before I, sw uh, after I switched, cause I was going to switch and then uh, post it to you guys, but I we had a Wi-Fi disconnect due to the hurricanes out here. So I apologize for that. And, um, I also want to just congratulate Sherbu for, for winning the tournament. Uh, you know, good, good matches. It really, uh, it was a good fight. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was very high energy. I think both of you guys had a very strong showing today. Um, yeah, the hurricane yeah. picked a bad, bad uh, weekend to hit us. <laughs> For sure. Oh, it threw my voice. Like, it, Justin had a little hiccup over there, too, or something, and it threw yeah. my voice into kung fu mode, where my mouth is now moving at a different rate than my words. So, you yeah. know, <laughs> there it is. But, yeah, so, All right. uh, but go ahead, Justin. Go, yeah, go Justin ahead. You go for it. No, you go ahead. All right. So, um, what, so I, I was going to ask, like, what's the thought behind the team? But I really wanted to ask about Balo because Balo, that man was tough to kill. So is that a, is that a fully reincarnated Balo? Hurricane winning again? <laughs> He's so. Oh, uh, we might've got confirmation of the hurricane. Well, hey, hey I, I, hey, I know we're joking about the hurricane, but like everybody out there, seriously, like be safe. I don't know if it's going to be last I heard it wasn't going to be like uh, devastatingly bad, but we have big storms out here uh, where I live all the time, too. They're very capable of knocking out your power and then most devastatingly your Internet. So it's hard to yeah, live. We don't we don't have that problem here. Oh, man. Well, you guys are in for a treat. <laughs> Let me tell you. Not really. Um there's a lot of nights where I go to bed and I'm like, come on, I got to do a video in the morning. Just stop storming. I just come on, please. So, yeah, that sounds great. Uh, he's still in the channel, though. So we're going to just hang on for a few moments here and see if he comes back. 
Yeah, apologies. I'm on cellular now. Okay, you okay. good? <laughs> How's it going? Yeah, I, I, took, I took myself off of Wi Fi. Right. Okay. Well, welcome back. Anyway, RJ, if you could with your question. Oh, yeah. Please. So, yeah, my question. Yeah. yeah, the Balo question. Did you hear the question? Yeah, yeah I did. Okay. I did hear the question. Yeah, so um, I, I tried to rush him today, but I, I couldn't get much on it because I was uh, running out of uh, Elemental Alcrest for, for Earth. Um, you know, and it wasn't bonus day, so I used up all my energy, but still only got him to like, I don't know, 14 reincarnations or something. Um, I was actually trying to run Naya with two Earth 100 unit comps, um, but it wasn't turning out so well. So then I switched to the, the Balo comp because uh, it was doing much better. Um, and that's why. Up. Yeah, uh, his re raise and, you know, full HP re raise is, you know, pretty amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was great. Um, the uh, okay, so we were talking about Justin and I were talking at the beginning when reincarnation first came out. I felt like, I mean, Leela, like SR Leela, was one of the most reincarnated units in the game, right? So, like, when I see one of those in competitive play, I just kind of assume I'm like, yeah, SR scrolls, somebody probably threw those at her. But for you, you were playing a Sephiroth Leela team, and then you also played some Bradley teams, so like. Uh, how much reincarnation went into those units? Because you had a match where I believe your, I believe it was your Sephiroth. This was early on in the broadcast. Lit, like, oh, it was against the Ice Missile Team. It was the craziest yep. match of the day. <laughs> that the Ice Missile Team just opened up, <laughs> and then Sephiroth walked out there with like 128 HP and killed them all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if it wasn't for that reflex, I might have lost that one too. So there, oh, there was some RNG involved there. Um, but yeah, um, Sephiroth is, uh, is, uh, max reincarnated. Bradley's okay. max reincarnated. SR Leela is max reincarnated. Um, now, now Lukavi and Chocobos know. I'm sure it wasn't a secret. <laughs> okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're, they're all max <laughs> reincarnated. Uh, I, mean, I, I, I think the game has become a reincarnation game now. And, uh, if you want to compete in the top 10, you kind of have to go. Um, you know, yeah. go hard on, on the units that you're likely going to use for your offense and defense. Yeah. So I'll ask you a question about that. Just like if you were, if you were giving advice to somebody who, um, let's say they're starting an account, maybe they're a new player, maybe they're starting another account, something like that. Would you say, what would it, would you say it'd be to their benefit to wait a few months to reincarnate something until they could take it all the way to the top and that way make sure they're getting like their newest, best unit reincarnated or would you suggest to them to like maybe try to spread those out among their PvP team? It really depends upon what what their goal is. If their goal is to finish PvE content uh, and be able to clear things that are more challenging for them, you know, they may get some more benefit from doing it early. Um, if they want to, you know, if they're more frugal and want to, you know, conserve and, and not spend Vizior um, on reincarnations, then they can save. Um, but I would, you know, I think, you know, for the enjoyment of the game, it's kind of, it's, it's a lot more fun when you do do the reincarnations and have, have units that can actually, you know, clear some of the more difficult, you know, content that we've been getting. Uh, like the reliquary, reliquary quest that we've been getting, it, it does help if you have uh, reincarnated units in, in your comps. Oh, yeah. Those things are hard, man. Like, yeah, absolutely. Like, they're hard. Uh, good. Okay, Justin, you got anything? Uh, yeah, I was just sort of wondering, so what led you to landing on the Balo composition? And were there any other, like, element teams that you tried out? I did. I, other than the Naya that you mentioned. Yeah, I tried Wind, I tried Ice, I tried other things, but I assumed that Dark was going to be very heavy uh, in, in the competition, and I thought that the uh, Earth Comp was probably the best counter uh, besides Light. Um, and there's some challenges with the light comp, uh, with the cost restrictions that we had this for this cup. Uh, I don't, I don't think you had them last cup, but for this cup, we had the cost restrictions, and that made running light a little bit more challenging. The um, I was very surprised to see as much Valentine's Day Miranda as I did. Like, it's a unit that I like, but I don't know that I ever considered her like top of the tier charts. So yeah, yeah what like, but I thought she performed okay. She looked fine. Uh, yeah, so I, you know, yeah, I agree. The, the best light comp that I tested was a 220 cost unit comp with, um, I think it was Sakura, um, Locke, 
and Mariel. <laughs> um, well, I was, okay. I, I, yeah, I was clearing like <laughs> I would have cleared Sherboost comp with with that comp. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's because that's a pure anti dark comp right there, right? Yeah, pure like, anti dark, two hundred twenty yeah. costs, like uh, way under budget, but you know, did its job. So, I, I mean, I could have, I could have run that, but you know, um, it, yeah, I, I wanted to get the full two forty in there. Yeah, well, and if you run um, that, and all of a sudden you're against Bradley, you should just DC. <laughs> like, just, right, exactly. Just quit. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. So, well, like, how many teams do you have on deck? Like, you you had a strong showing from Dark and yeah. Earth, obviously. Do you have any like backup ones? Yeah, I had six teams on deck. Oh, okay. I didn't really need what? ones, but I had six teams on deck. Cool. So, uh, like, did you do? This is a bit of a rhetorical question, but you did a lot of preparation, obviously, with your guild before going into this. So, no, I just did. did I just share did a little insight. A lot of free match mocking. So, oh. yeah, so, it, yeah, it wasn't, there wasn't any kind of, um, uh, you know, you don't do it in, in the guild battle or anything. You just kind of do free. Oh, right. Yeah. So with um, guild members. Over. Yeah. 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 We, I, uh, yeah. If, in, to prep, uh, there are people who provided some advice and um, I want to give a shout out to uh, Quistis and, and Kami of uh, Visiport who helped me out with, with uh, some of the uh, suggestions that they had and. Um, you know, we have some really talented people in the guild who, you know, who I think are, you know, better than me <laughs> um, at, at this game. And so I, I learned from from the best, uh, you know, being in Visipor from, from those guys. Yeah. Awesome. All right, cool. Well, uh, do you have any final words? Maybe another shout out to anybody in your guild or anything like that? Well, I just uh, want to uh, give the, a shout out to the whole Visipor family. Uh, Visipor reincarnated. Re I'm retired. Um, and uh, Shibu Sen, who's also part of our family, um, you know, we've come a long ways and uh, I'm really thankful for the community that we have. It makes the game much more fun. Um, you know, we re recently had the Realm Scourge uh, multiplayer quest and it was really nice to see mm -hmm. a bunch of people coming together to, uh, to help clear those quests for, for you know, some of the weaker players who might not be able to do it, you know, solo or trying to, you know, find a match. So. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, I think that that I, in terms of suggestions, I think if we could do more of those types of things, it would really bring the community together and uh, help kind of keep the game alive. Uh, especially, yeah, I have I seen a lot of people banding yeah. together for this. <laughs> yeah, especially in light of the kind of the road to worldwide issues that we've been seeing, we we really appreciate those types of uh, uh, multiplayer content that uh, encourages collaboration um, and uh, just you know people coming together to help each other. I, I remember doing it. I tried Realm Scourge on stream, went one for two. <laughs> like, <laughs> literally wiped and had, and I was like on stream and I was like, oh, this is, man, this is really hard if you can't coordinate it live. <laughs> yeah. I, I did try it with four Lucios though. That was really a bad idea. Don't try that. That's interesting. That did not Which work. one? Yeah. So, all right. Well, he all said right. thank well, you we for will... joining. Yeah, man. Yeah, and thank yeah, we will see you in December. Yeah, thank you for the calling and for all your um, for putting this together. It was really fun, and thank you for all the participants. Uh, shout out to everyone uh, who played today. Um, good showing from everyone. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, and congratulations again on second place. All right, bye bye. <laughs> all right, now Serbu yep. will be joining us next. Serabu on the line here, as they say. Maybe they don't say that. Well, as Either. they say back in the 1970s, we'll get them <laughs> on the line. We're having a conference call. We got a phone in the middle of a table, and we're dialing numbers, spinning rotary wheels. Yeah. Hello. All of those things. Serabu, hello. Hi. We ha Now. Hello, Serabu. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Second place one time, first place the next time. The little little guys all grown up, just like you said. That's right. The little <laughs> boys all grown up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I never know if the people who are playing are watching the stream too, so that's cool. Good. Yep. Yeah, I try it. So I, uh, it, it's a huge distraction for me. So I do have to like mute it on occasion and you know really focus. Uh, my roommate like came downstairs and he's like poking around and. So like eating food and i'm like oh my gosh this is so distracting <laughs> just trying to focus <laughs> so just little things like that when you're trying to like 
scroll through your 500 trust stones you're like where is yeah. this <laughs> yeah no kidding um so yeah you had a very strong showing from um i think you played the whole the same team basically for the whole tournament right yeah yeah i did i just moved some stuff around initial placements um during the during the breaks or like when the when the match was off i was like thinking about what i wanted to resist <laughs> as far as like espers and uh trust stones went so i just was moving those around the whole time okay so if you could shed a little light on that so what did you want to resist um well it, it, like going in i'm like oh my gosh the biggest threats are dark and light so i need to have like demon wall on leela with the, the light and dark resist nodes raf's got to have great demon with light resist and defense and you know sephiroth's got to have the uh dark dark earth and light res you know some of the main the main threats and yeah once i realized that people weren't really doing like status effects too much in those initial matches that's true huh? um i just went full on like uh elemental resists and that way i was like able to be safe from like four different elements and then hp percent and luck on that other trust stone yep See, yeah, other than, like, a few silences, I don't think we saw anything. Yeah. Yeah, I... Mean, I this... Yeah, go ahead. Miranda had the ability. Um, she, she wanted to put um, that Stern to sleep in that earlier match. Yep. Um, mm. But I, it just didn't take for... And even my Lila was pretty ineffective. I don't know if you guys noticed, but, like, she didn't land a clutch silence that that got me, you know, the win. It was, like, she's, like, too slow. She's just, like goofing off in the corner we yeah, talked we about that a lot that on the stream broadcast. yeah like <laughs> leela was basically she tanked effectively because she was so far away from everybody because she's had one turn the whole fight yeah like, yeah she's just a stump <laughs> there hanging out hey she's a late game player <laughs> yep, oh, yeah yep. she's yet to grow all the way up yep she's still learning oh man still though um Way to yeah, like, go ahead. way to stick to your guns though. Like I like to see the somebody say like people will show their like yeah we ask like what's your favorite player what picture do you want us to use and people will be like my favorite my favorite unit is Jaden and I want you to show a picture of Wingstern and then I'm gonna run Earth all day <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like okay um and so I like to see somebody be like nope this is my favorite unit I'm gonna force it and it, it get like Roth's not that hard to force I guess. But still, just ride that horse as long as you can. And now you're going to the finals. So you got a chance to come back in December and earn that big prize. Yeah, um, yeah, really excited. Did not expect to get this far with this team either. Yeah, congratulations. Um, so were there any surprises that you had? Were you, you fought against Aerith, right? Uh, with yep. The, so, the, <laughs> where, <laughs> so actually, the first big surprise was my first match. It, it wasn't televised. Uh, and it was against, I think, I Ilya or Iliana. Um, great player. Okay, I know that um, player, yeah. Great initial placements. Uh, great buff orders. Actually, uh, I got pretty smoked in the, uh, the first match we played. It was like a, a very decisive loss that I suffered. Um, it was Valentine, Miranda, Engelbert, and Wingstern, I think. And yeah, even though I had the dark and light res going in, it, it just wasn't enough. And uh, Engelbert, you know, ate up all Sephiroth's AP. And then Miranda came in, did some AoEs, Stern followed up, and, you know, that little extra life speed boost thing he does, and the limit break, and it was a wrap. Like, I was like, oh man, I'm just going to lose. <laughs> I'm just gonna lose the first one, but uh, then I just I changed some things around. Um, I think they ran a different team. It uh, mm -hmm. even though that you know I got kind of smushed like a bug, they switched up their team, and I <laughs> ended up beating them with the uh, that that new team. I think they did Earth, and then they switched back to their light, and I had even more dark and light res from the initial the setup from the previous match, and I just kept it. And uh, I changed my initial placement. So, you know, Sephiroth and Raph got up in their face really quickly, and they weren't able to set up as well. 
that's kind of what we noticed as like the big difference between your first match against Hiso and the later matches was it just it it seemed better for you if Roth and Sephiroth could start going to work early. Yeah, the, yeah. it's this map is a lot like the quick pick uh, map right now where mm-hmm. it's just your initial placement and that coin flip is who kind of who determines the win or loss. And there's only so many micro adjustments you can make within that like one buff you might get to yeah. change the course of battle. So there's definitely quite a bit of like luck and just kind of perseverance, I would say. Uh, the fact that I'd never changed my team was like, uh, <laughs> was, was, a, was a constant, like other people did and then they would lose and I think it would throw them off. And that actually happened to me the first, the tournament I did last time. I was, you know, uh, cycling through teams and I changed my team even after I won and I lost and it really threw, it threw off my whole chi. Like I would just, yeah, I, I, bl- I blanked out after that. I was like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> but I wonder, like, did you have other teams prepared for today or just this team? So I did. Uh, I had a, a, a Sorrow, Yuffie, and Mish team. Oh, I was gonna we didn't th- see I was, fire. I, I, was, I was ready to throw some Toads out if, like, Ice, if, if I was going to see, like, Ice Howlet or whatever. Um, if I was going to see more water, I had, I have, like, a, an arena team with Lightning, and I was just going to, like just slap slime in there and and call it like if it came down to it it like wasn't really you know it wasn't set up um like fully prepared but it's something i could probably squeeze out in just a couple minutes between matches nice okay that Aerith team that you fought did you get a feeling (laughs) that that was just um let's see because that was against shadow did yep. you get a feeling that Shadow was just like, I can't beat your dark team no matter what, so I'm just going to play Aerith for fun? No, no. I think, uh, it, again, you mentioned this on the stream, I think, where we just saw Bradley come out, and he's like, oh, I'm going to go wind. And I saw the wind in the party formation, and I'm like, well, wait a sec. He's got Glaciella. I was like, well, that means I can probably afford to like get two buffs off, and I can just start all my units in the corner and... um. Dark, really, I haven't struggled too much with Wind, especially in limited cost with Dark. So I was, like, very confident uh, going into that, that everything was going to be all right. And then I remember a previous match he did, he had, like, a really strong Edward and and Perrine. So that was my big worry, was that he was going to bring those out, and Ed was going to come up and, like, break my Ceph's barrier, and Perrine was going to follow up and just explode everybody. So I'm just kind of fortunate that he didn't bust that out on me, and he went. <laughs> That's what with... we thought was gonna happen, and then it was Aerith. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, okay, this could get crazy, you know. Um, yeah. Aerith, Aerith can throw a haste on, and then a quick in, and again with the initial. Well, she did have a pretty good quick in in there. Yeah, and, and the uni too, like the it must have been like a bow tie uni with like ten thousand evade, like everybody's missing yeah, the what uni. What the heck was that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but th- that's that's an example of just how initial placement um can be so decisive in uh in this map where if you know preens and Aerith are in no man's land even if you're like hasting and quickening them um what i found is you really need to have a unit start in the middle unless you're like really confident in your initial turn order that you guys can get your you know your first buffs off and then you can you can coast down the map kind of as a unit because once like people get separated and it's not like a tank like Balo sponging damage um, or like baiting out buffs, then you're just gonna lose one unit and then another unit and then your other unit. Yeah. Well, and unfortunately, I think what happened to Shadow both times was well, I guess fortunately for you, but fortunately for him is both times he ran a unit that tends to be very okay standing in a corner. Yeah. And and Leela and Aerith both stood in that same corner. Yep. And maybe maybe Aerith did have a couple quickens in the bag, but the only one she did just sent Perrine so far away from her that there's no and the fight was all the way over on Uni's side. Yep. So yeah. Yep. The other time, yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, you're good. Um the other thing with uh placements and this particular map is that little hill on the middle is like height two mm-hmm. and i you're mentioning that like oh sephiroth can't jump over that and uh, neither can little Leela. 
but Raph with her uh, jump passive can just cruise over that thing and you know like nobody's business like she's just ready to go to town and I thought over and over about uh, removing Raph because mine's not reincarnated and using like uh, Fina more or even Dwayne but I'm glad I stuck with Raph because of that ability to just you know traverse over that height and then if the enemy's there they're just ready to spend all their ap on raf as she you know sponges it up because that's her job yeah and i like i feel like it's something i mention sometimes it's like i'm, I'm like when i'm talking about a new unit the, a lot of you it's like Dwayne has uh the jump passive from dragoon yep and then raf has her jump passive you never need it until it is like a map that demands you have it and yeah. this was definitely one of those. And you you would see Sephiroth get stuck. He would just get to go to that wall. And then, I think it was maybe in one of your matches, you were fighting against a Valade. And the Valade was perfectly safe a mile away from Sephiroth. And then he ran up to the wall. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh, you he's, killed He started yourself. to catch a straight punch. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> and, and so, you know, sometimes the AI will be the AI. Yeah. Yep. All right. Indeed. Well, um, I don't want to cut you off here, but I would like to give you an opportunity to give a shout out, any last mentions or anything else that you would like to say before we close out our interview today. A uh, special shout out to Lukavi Guild. Uh, it's been my home for a long time. And definitely uh, if you are if you like the PvP tournaments and you want to see them continue, make sure to register and to, uh, to get involved, get in the Discord, uh, let Square Enix know that we're into this and we want it to continue <laughs> yeah appreciate that yeah all right indeed um well congratulations again on your win it was um well fought and well earned Definitely. thanks a lot yeah pleasure thanks you guys yeah. for uh, hosting again yep and indeed. see you in uh february or not indeed. Oh my gosh. or, or december, december yeah whatever yeah, whatever december. the finals are i got <laughs> yep. it written down <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations again, everybody in chat. Give a congratulations out to our first place winner, Suribu. And thank you very much for taking the time to do the interview with us. Yep. Cheers, guys. Have a great night. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. All right. Oh. Back to Zoom land. Okay. Back to reality. <laughs> yeah. See ya. Bye. <laughs> okay. I'm back in Zoom land. Cool. Uh, very nice interviews. It's always interesting to see the amount of work that goes into that. Like he said, he was scrolling through trust zones, just trying to find any little advantage that he could get. And it's honestly, every single little change that you yeah. can do in auto can really, it, it has like a uh, a butterfly effect. It, it, it does, say, because but... like, <laughs> if you get that, like think about somebody like Dark Fina. You know, I think one of the theories behind people using Dark Fina today was like, she's going to give a resist buff to my group. But what did we see her do a lot today? Oh, there's somebody in front of me. I'm going to run at them and try to kill them. And then she's dead. Yep. And instead of your whole group being more resistant to the enemy, you are in a 2v3. So, absolutely. Yep. All right. Yep. So let's go through a few things here before we close out today. A look at that. So first up, we have the milestone campaign rewards here. So... Um, this is going to be based on the number of viewers that we have on the VODs. We'll tally them up and the rewards will be sent out on the 15th of September. The views are going to be counted up for the next 10 days until August 29th. So be sure to view the VOD, you know, leave a comment if you would like or anything like that. We go back. Well, I go back and I read all the comments on them. Um, but we've got 8,000 views, 10,000 views, 13,000 views for the rewards there on the screen. So please check out those videos. Give a like and a thumbs up. Uh, next up here. We've got the predictions, so let's roll it back here. Okay. So we've got the, yes, uh, we have the stats. You want to go over the stats? Yeah, I mean, do, do we have them in, are they in the Discord right now? Yes, they are. I'm looking for them. Okay. Just, oh, okay. Scroll Tournament baseline. assist. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Scroll up a little bit. Um, You want me to do it? I would love to. Yes, if you could, please. Okay, your number one picked unit. It's actually a tie. So I guess you could put these in either one or two, right? Would be Little Leela, regular Little Leela, and Sephiroth. So one, two, Little Leela, okay. Sephiroth. Or Sephiroth, Little Leela, depending on how you want to like write that, right? So 
Justin, you had that. What you had that correct. <laughs> you had that perfect. Um, I think I had Sephiroth in there at least. But okay, I did yeah, have Sephiroth. Did now, number two. You're basically, the rest of your top five looks like this: Roth, King Bradley, Balo. So there's your top five: Leela, Sephiroth, Roth, King Bradley, Balo. But Roth, King Bradley, Balo were both a 7.4% pick rate. Eight picks. Um, and then Lilila and Sephiroth were both a 10% pick rate. They're picked 11 times each during the stream. So 11% of the units that you saw today were Little Lila and Sephiroth. 7.5% uh, per, of the units you saw today. Honorable mention, though. Honorable mention. Six picks for Miranda, Sweetheart, and Engelbert. Five picks for Valade. And four picks for Bartz and Preet. So your Bartz tried to sneak into that top five. He really did. Like you were, you were on to something with the Bart's there. Well, he was free, hundred cost in a light unit. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, like, I know people had access to like stats on Discord and stuff like that. We did not have any information except just. Um, yeah, well, they they asked us like a week and a half that? ago. <laughs> so what do you yeah. think? I'm like, oh, here, I think this. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought yeah, of good. So units. we just had, you know. Uh, our whatever ideas that we had on that no no information so let's take a look here i got three and i think you also got three no you only got two. i got two you only got two what three did you get oh you had bradley as well Bart's is on there no Bart's no, is not bradley. top five yeah he is he's right no, there with perrine no no number there's Here, <laughs> no justin he's in 10th place it goes no, Leela, Sephiroth, Roth, Bradley, Balo. No, 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 no. No. That's not how that You're works. not reading this right. I'm right. I'm no. right. No. Either way, I had three. You had two. Um, but we got some confirmation here from the team that everybody that entered filled out the form. They will be getting 100 scrolls of this. Um. So regardless of your pick or your third place pick, you're going to be getting the scrolls anyway, as long as you filled out the form. If you happen to get all five correct, you will receive the additional 200 as well. So um, that was not actually planned. I know a lot of times there's always like, oh, can we get producer's power or something? Um, I think in hindsight here, that was hard. Didn't quite work that out exactly hard, how we expected. So yeah. Everybody that filled out the form will get the 100 score. The people behind um, the scenes worked hard to make, like they worked hard to make that happen. Yes. So. <laughs> well, thank you to them that was a good that was good yes indeed all right a couple more things here to cover before we end it out this evening uh let's take a look here so roll through here we've got mention the viewer rewards oh, we've got the discord so please join the discord yes. scan the qr code on your screen here um 5, members we get three visagenic antlers for ur times three other rewards have already been sent out so please 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 go ahead and get in there and you know there's a lot of pvp discussion that goes on in there and the channels people sparring with each other discussing that sort of thing so get in there um, and join some like-minded individuals next up we have the rong's that's auto battle pvp consultation that is you next week um yes that's going to be coming up next week uh you'll be able to fill out the form uh down below in the descriptions of whatever um channel you're watching on so go down there click on that fill out the form um you can be one of five people that are selected to be part of the consultation live on the stream also join the discord when this is going on you can have your chat question whatever read during the live stream um, by rnj he's going to be answering questions that sort of thing i'm not hand picking the five people by the way it is a random um like the the people who judge the tournaments i believe are just yes. randomly selecting five so um it's not going to be Orin J and his five best friends <laughs> rigging the uh, rigging the picks. So, <laughs> yeah, indeed. Thank you for clarifying that. No problem. Um, so, yeah, I think that's actually going to do it today for our live stream. So thank you, everybody that tuned in to the War of the Visions Final Fantasy Brave Exvius Championship 2023, the Wazette Cup. Yeah. It was a very action packed and high energy stream that we had today with a lot of PvP action. Um, I really love the auto battle tournaments. They 
they they move quickly. It's always you know it's quick, it's fast paced. I love um, it. But any final thoughts? Anything that you wanted to highlight from the stream today, or mm. Jay? No, I thought it was great. Um, good insight from the winners. Uh, I'm just ha hey like. I want to just shout out what uh, Cerebu said. I think it was at the end where he said, hey, if this is something you like, make sure to join the Discord because those big numbers, mm -hmm. like I know those goals seem high, like 5,000 people in a Discord. That's a big Discord. But this is the kind of thing you take to the, you know, I don't work at Square Enix. So when I see something like that, that's, that's, that's me being like, look, this is something players want. And if you guys like it, joining the Discord, being active in there, watching the streams, it's all help support these existing so and i love doing them so i just want them to exist for that reason so yeah indeed um speaking of existing we have the ovis cup coming up here next month it exists the signups for that are available right now so please head to the discord follow the links go to the right channel and sign up for the manual battle tournament which will be happening in the european region uh, we would love to get as many people in there that we possibly can Am and, I am I still in yeah. kung fu mode? That'd be kind of cool. Uh, I think you probably are. Awesome. I don't, that was very random. I don't know what happened. That I get maybe Zeus, not to be confused with other Zeus. <laughs> that my computer here. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, there we go. But uh, yeah. So thank you everybody for tuning in today. It was very fun having you all around. Shout out to the Square Enix Twitch. Nope, Square Enix YouTube. Um, this is the first time that we were live over on Square oh, that's right. YouTube page. So shout out to everybody there. Yes, thank you very, very much, everybody, for tuning in today. We will see you as part of the Ovis Cup. That's it for us today. Yep. Thank you for watching, everybody. Goodbye. Bye-bye.